So this is the November 3rd meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council. We're starting extra early <laughs> at 5 o'clock just so everybody can have extra fun. Here she comes. Good job. Um, and uh, the first, uh, first we'll have the roll call. Judy? Okay. Wintrow? Here. Asklin? Yeah. <laughs> Sims? Here. House? Here. McQueen? Here. Also present are Joe Bates, Water and Wastewater Supervisor, Jason Hamby, Streets and Park Supervisor, Interim Chief of Police, David Hale, uh, Johnny Burns, Super Supervisor of Electric Systems, and Melissa Van Zandt, Finance Director, and Village Manager, Patty Bates. Thank you. Um, and please, if you would, silence your cell phones and any other devices you might have on your person. Um, this is more of a workshop than the, than the formal meeting, but we will still require, if people want to talk, we still will require you to come up to the front and speak into the microphone and give your name. Uh, so, um, and we will, we will hear from, from the community throughout the, the presentation. So, um, the other, one other thing I wanted to mention is that um, it seems that we're going to have the discussion of the, um, the water plant process. Um, the next step is to actually do some rankings of the, um, of the candidates that we're looking at. Um, but there is some discussion. We need to have an executive session before that. So it seems to make sense that we would go into executive session at the end of the budget session. So maybe around 645 or so, go into executive session, then come out of that executive session um, to go into the, back into the regular meeting. So and I that just point right. Right. So we'll, we will have our discussion about the rankings and why publicly. Um, but there's some, some financial uh, discussion that we need to have um, in, in executive session. Um, so is that agreeable with council? Okay. Uh, so uh, tonight we are uh, revisiting Enterprise. Um, the last meeting we were, we, we went very quickly. We had to, to uh, leave early to or exit out of the discussion early to go into executive session for another matter so we're going to revisit enterprise funds and we're going to talk about capital budgets tonight and uh, i'll turn the floor over to melissa van zandt our finance director all right so in your packet tonight you had um three different documents there was um projected Projected balances, fund balances, and that's just kind of a that's kind of a one-stop shop for everything that we've looked at so far. It's got general fund, all the special revenue funds, and then the enterprise funds, which we're going to discuss. So it's just basically giving you an idea of where everything should start the year 2015 off in. So that's that's just there basically for reference. Um, so if we go ahead and turn to the enterprise fund budget. The, the front page is a really nice, just straight up side by side comparison of all the revenues and expenditures. Where I think we're going to end 2014, um, the top line of each fund that has the fund label also has the beginning balance that we walked into 2014 with. And if you look um, at the very bottom of that, it's got the 2014 projected ending balance and then the revenues and the expenditures that we're going to um, help us arrive at that figure in between. So I've got each of the enterprise funds broken down and just, like I said, straight up revenue and expenditures and where I think we're going to end the year. All of the funds have ended in a better spot than what was projected at the beginning of the year. But with that being said, if you look at some of the projected ending balances, some of them are really low. Um, they're all still in the black, which is a good thing, but some of them are a little bit lower than what I think is comfortable. So. We've got the 2015 budget, which you're going to see in the following pages, and it's going to have the, project the projected impact on those fund balances. So each of those you're going to see are in the red, so they are going to affect those um, fund balances that we currently have. All of them should be able to support um, the fund balances that I project should be able to support the, the deficits that would occur within 2015 except for the solid waste fund, which has been kind of in bad shape for a while. Um, Patty and I have came up with a solution for the solid waste fund. 
as well as for the uh, sewer fund because the sewer fund is doing okay right now but if you look at what deficit is likely to occur in 2015 with this budget it's going to really cut into that quite a bit so we kind of need to get ahead of the game with that one um, and try to make some take some corrective action before that gets too low so we do have some some proposals with us tonight as to what we would like to do to those two funds but before we get into that um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about what savings did occur within the enterprise funds I mean if you look at where we started 2014 and where I'm thinking that we're going to start 2015 that is only taking operations into consideration for 2015 but what I did was I made a budget savings worksheet and I kind of extrapolated all the personnel cost and stripped it down to exactly what the operations are and then um, compared side by side what the operations in 14 were and what the operational costs in 15 are and every single department met and blown away the expectations for the 3% that Patty had. The electric department was able to save 17%. Water distribution was able to save 42%. Water treatment was able to save 3%. Sewer collection was able to save 21. Sewer treatment was able to save 18. And solid waste was able, able to save 19. But that's kind of skewed because there were two invoices that were paid in 2014 that were from 2013. So that's an even in and out anyways but for what it's worth um, every single department was able to make pretty significant cuts so that's that's kind of where we're starting this whole thing out at so what you see in the 2015 budget is only operations just like all the other budgets that we've looked at prior to so I guess with that being said um, whatever you all want to go through um, in terms of the budget first if you'd like to do that or if you'd like to see what Patty and I have proposed for moving forward to kind of help out the sewer fund and the solid waste fund. We can start wherever you guys want to. Well, Council, I mean, do we want to go through, just have a brief review of each fund, uh, each one of the funds? So why don't we just okay. do that? Okay, so we've got the, if we want to start with the electric fund, I am projecting that the revenues are going to be slightly less just because they have been trending downward for the last several years. But then again, though, in the expenditures, the power costs are going to be less too. So with the decreased revenues, there are also decreased expenditures as well. So the revenues, um, we, do, we do have a slight decrease in those um, projected out for 2015. Something else that's notable for the electric fund is with the miscellaneous receipts and reimbursements. You'll notice that in 2013, 2014, and then again in 2015, they're higher than what occurred in 2012, and that's because of the Bryan Center bond repayment from the general fund, which is gonna be paid off in 2016, so that will go away. And that's approximately $67,000 off the top of my head, but right in the $70,000 range, so that will de decrease by that amount in 2016, so we won't be able to expect that additional revenue to, um, to happen anymore. And that's coming out of the general fund? Yes, it's Which coming. is good, so that means mm -hmm. that we won't have that expenditure out of the general fund either after, after 2016? 2016 is the last payment. Okay, thank you. I believe 2016 is the last payment. Mm -hmm. That seems right. Mm -hmm. So the revenues are fairly simple. I mean, as are most of the revenue, or the enterprise funds, it's mostly <coughs> um, consumer um, fees coming in. And then with the expenditures, <coughs> if you take a look at the side-by-side -side comparisons um, of what was budgeted in 2014, which is the far left um, light purple color, and then the dark blue is the 2015, there, there were decreases in each of those areas. What major items are in the contractual services? I know it's AMP, what else? Yeah, the majority of that are our power costs. Um, I think what was budgeted in 2014 was like two and a half million dollars worth of power costs. So that, that's the bulk of it right there. The other line items within the enterprise though with contractual services, let me see what some of the big ones are. Um, there's $100,000 for tree trimming and line clearing. There's $70,000 worth of professional services, which that's been cut for 2015 down to 20. Um, insurance, maintenance of equipment, maintenance of facility, 
hardware, software, um, and JV2 issuance cost and power, which is like $25,000, but that was extrapolated out of the operating cost just because we can't kind of get around that okay. along with the DPNL and AMP. So those are the big ones. The, the bulk of it, though, is the power cost. And then there was a line truck that was purchased in 2014, and that's in the projections just because the first payment hadn't came out yet, and that was just made like a week ago. I don't even think the check's cashed yet. So that's a, that's a new projection that's in there because of that additional purchase, and then that goes out the next five years as well. So that's that debt service line that you see within that. The materials and supplies on the revenue fund, it's the 258. Or wait, no, I'm sorry, is it? No, that's, it's capital, never mind. So the capital expenditure for two, 2014, is that, what is that? Um, I don't think I have the 2014 capital budget oh, with me okay. to remember what all was approved. Um, Johnny, do you know? I mean, I know you bought poles. I know you bought some stock of different things that you needed. The bucket truck uh, occurred. The bucket truck was in that. Oh, okay. That was a big, yeah, that was, that mo was that's 2013 most of it. 2013 that actually occurred in 2014. Now, that was an encumbrance that rolled over. Okay. And then the transfers, that's the kilowatt hour tax to the general fund that occurs every month. So that's what the transfers are. Any questions, council? And again, the savings that were um, cut off of operations in electric were 17% this year for 2015. <coughs> Any other questions? Thank you. And there wasn't anything specific you were, this wasn't a fund that you and Patty had talked about, some of your ideas for how to save additional money? Not on this okay. one. Okay. No, not on yeah, this one. That, we're thinking about a rate study for kind yes. of right. all of them. Right. So that would be a rate study fund. But, I mean, it is notable that the 2014 projection was going to be that we were going to be at over a million dollar deficit and we're only sitting at about 537000 at this point mm -hmm. is what the projection is. So. A little bit better than what we thought. I mean, it's and that's with three hundred thousand of capital expenditure. Yes, but the power cost, though, again, mm -hmm. the power costs have, have decreased because the the use is down. So right. Um, it you know there was just such a precipitous change between two thousand thirteen and two thousand fourteen. That's I mean a million dollars deficit um, or deficit spending in in one year is, well, I guess it's not that I'm sorry. So those two light purple columns don't count. Okay, never mind. So it's $300,000. Um, so that's Difference, actually yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. Yep, the, the purple is the really important column, but it just, the, the two lighter ones just kind of show how the, how the year has progressed. And again, with the electric, it looks as if um, as of 930, we had spent more because at that point when I was running the reports, the encumbrances for the power costs were included in that. And Johnny and I took a look at that and where we stood, and we actually decreased them after that. But I didn't want to, that's why the projection is a little bit lower than what the actuals as of September 30th were, because we decreased that um, purchase order after the fact. So okay. that's a little confusing. But yeah, the dark purple column is the best one to look at. Okay. How the year's going to end, at least at this point. So any questions with electric? Okay, I, would, I would like to know at some point, not necessarily now, but eventually, what is a healthy balance for that fund in particular? Um, because we've kind of used it to kind of help us do things because the balance has been healthy. And so we have had more like capital expenditures that we have, we've been doing out of that in a kind of deliberate way because it was getting pretty high 
but what would be a, a healthy balance for that would be good to know. And we can look at that. I know that there are some things that need to occur on a regular basis that um, Johnny wants to institute, for instance, um, regular poll inspections. Uh, that's every mm -hmm. five years, right, Johnny? And so he wants to uh, institute those um, because we've had, we have some issues with some of the older polls. Um, I know that he has a couple of things he wants to switch over to the new. Um, but the, cut, the cutouts need to go to the poly versus the ceramic. Yeah, ceramic. so that, you know, we'll have there, to. But there we'll might be just sort of like um, some of the people that we work with, either AMP or who's our energy consultant. Right, John Courtney. They, they might be actually able to meeting say, with him on Thursday. Say, what would be, where, where do we want to kind of keep that balance? What's the what's a kind of a healthy amount. I don't think it's bad that we've, we've, we've dipped into it to do some important capital work like replacing the streets down, lights downtown. They were in terrible shape. Um, I think it's good. It was a healthy balance. Where do we have to, how high do we want to keep that balance? Right. And, and Johnny and I are meeting with John Courtney on Thursday, so that's a question we can ask him. Thank you. Thanks. Is that something we should uh, find out for all of the enterprise funds? It, it, it is, but that will be part of a bigger rate study as mm -hmm. far as for the water, the sewer, and the, the um, solid waste. John's probably the best person to answer that for the electric because he handles all of our contracts and everything, and he can help us take that into effect. And I have been in touch with RCAP about a rate study, and they did send me some information that we can look at. Um, was it for all four of them, Melissa, it was six or four, four, twenty thousand. Yeah, I something th like think that. it was like four. It was like five or six thousand for the first one, and then four thousand every the other three. Everyone thereafter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's not bad. All right. Thank you. Okay. So next we have water, and water was something that we had kind of started to touch on at the last meeting. Um, the filter was down at the water plant from April 1st to August 1st and basically what that did was the the rate increase that we had kind of subsidized that. Um, what ended up happening was when the rates got increased in April we didn't realize the full impact of that until July which we had planned for. We had planned to realize, realize the full impact in July and projected that correctly. However, the revenues did take a hit because everybody was using less water because of the situation with the water. So the water and the sewer, you'll see that the revenues are actually both down right in line with one another um, just because if people aren't using water, the water's not going down the sewer and the sewer revenues are based upon the water usage. So those two actually went right hand in hand together. Um, it, was, it was a little bit... Um, little bit worse than what we had hoped for but then again though we couldn't plan for the filter to go down so but it was just one of those things why it it looks like the projected revenues Sorry. are quite a bit higher than from 2013 yeah because of that increase we were oh. we were hoping for that increase that was I mean it right I think we it were was hoping a 15 it, I see what increase. you're saying Right. So we would have seen the full impact of everybody paying that from July forward. So right. we were, that if was people what? were using it the, at the same rates, it would right. have been a... Exactly. Uh, we would okay. have realized that, that estimation, but since the filter went down, we didn't, we didn't realize that estimation at all. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit, a little bit um, less than what we had hoped for. Um, but you will see that there was a transfer that was made. Um, this was about mid-year, mid and this was yeah. to support um, some engineering costs. For, I think was it the it was the loop in the bottleneck patty that that was to support and then um, yeah probably it was yeah. done before I came in but that's the biggest yes. project that's on yeah. the table yes there was engineering costs um, for that and then the filter rebuild was also the money was transferred in from the general fund to support those two projects right the water fund is yeah what where we really need some work so the bottom line though with the water, we thought we were gonna go about $400,000.
into um, into reserves, and we're only going to go 246,000 into reserves. But then again, <laughs> that budget was taking into consideration some of those extra costs. I'd included those in there, so it looks <coughs> a little bit worse than what was actually originally anticipated. However, um, we are going to finish out the year a little bit better than what we had thought, but that's a direct result of a lot of the, the savings that have occurred. Mm -hmm. And then that transfer in um, also helped that too. And but the projected the projected 2015 budget assumes no increases? That's No, that's just assuming um, exactly what the water rates are now yes. and what has been coming in um, since the filter was fixed. Right. So I was able to look at August and September and even October when I made these projections. And that's assuming that everything stays the same. Right. That would be what so we would if we did in. a if we did a watering increase that that number could change. Yes, that could change. Okay. We bring in on a monthly average about fifty four thousand dollars in, into the water fund and that's what that projection is based on. Okay, thank okay. you. So water distribution was able to save 42% and water treatment was able to save three. Um, water treatment, their operating budget is a lot less than water distribution though. So they were able, they were able to save, they were both able to save at least the 3% though, which is a good thing. And most of these cuts um, were coming out of professional services. Water distribution uh, cut their professional services line from 136 to $30,000. But that was due to a lot of um, engineering costs that were paid out in that year. And then, um, let's see, sewer treat, or no, I'm sorry, water treatment. That was mostly in, um, well, that was kind of all over the board with that one. It was $3,900 that was cut off of operations. So if you tie this back to that very front page, we've got the water fund um, expenditures exceeding revenues by approximately $18,000. And the water fund should have, if all goes as planned, $41,000 um, beginning the year. So that's going to leave that fund in, in a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty close situation in terms of yeah. the, re the, the revenues and the expenditures and the fund balance and how the effect that it's going to have. So obviously with all of the projects that we have moving forward with water, um, we're definitely going to have to look at that, which I don't think is any surprise. Does anybody have any questions in terms of the water fund and the two departments within it, distribution and treatment? I don't think so. No, I think we Just can move go, on. Yeah. OK, we'll move on to sewer. Um, the original, the original enterprise fund budget that I had in the last packet, um, I did have to tweak a bit and one of the biggest tweaks occurred within the sewer fund and that was because I was using the figures as of September 30th and at the beginning of October, um, Vernay, Vernay pays us every month for water that is going through, groundwater that is going through our uh, sewer collection system and they had not paid that for quite some time. It was a little over a year, and it was about $60,000. And um, once we put a little bit of um, pressure on them, they, they were able to pay, that, pay us off in full. So that payment was made around the 1st of October. So I had to update the revenue figures to, to reflect that as well. So there was a little bit of a change. So I do, um, that is realized in that front page where the ending balance projected for this year, this year will be two hundred and three thousand dollars. So when we look, what is at the purpose of that? They have. I don't know. Is it that has there? to do? Really speak to it that. has to do with the the uh, contaminated property, uh -huh. and the groundwater there is collected and sent through the water treatment plant. Oh, before okay. Before it's right, discharged, right, right. so they're not using water, correct? Using wastewater water, treatment, but they're putting yeah, it into through the, the wastewater through treatment, the wastewater treatment plant. plant. Yes, and so yes, that's correct. They're not using water, so it's not being metered mm -hmm. in that regard. But there is a meter that tells Joe, you know what yeah. what they huh. need to pay us, which translates okay. into Melissa's. I, I didn't realize that it was going through our mm -hmm. system. Yeah, and there was a, I mean the the fact that it wasn't paid for such a long period of time there were just a number of things that happened with that I mean their corporate office moved to Georgia there was a person that we had as a contact that was here in town that's no longer um, with the company that retired there was a lot of things that kind of 
played into yeah, that. Yeah, played into that whole thing. But we ended up getting it worked out, and it's it's been fine moving forward. So Good. Okay, so um, sewer, we have sewer treatment and sewer collection are the two departments that uh, fall within the sewer fund. And um, sewer collection was able to save 21% and sewer treatment was able to save 18. Um, sewer treatment, they had um, significant reductions in maintenance of facility just because the facility is newer and there were, um, Joe took a look at things and he doesn't really have a whole lot of projects that would need to uh, come out of the maintenance of facility. So that was able to be reduced. Sewer collections, um, all, most of the savings came from professional services and a reduction in operating supplies as well. So again, sewer, the revenues, if we take a look at that, it was a, a direct correlation with the water filter. So those, those revenues were uh, <coughs> decreased as well. But what I did was I took a look at 2015 and I, I did, um, I, I took a look at how, how things have been and exactly the amount of money that's been coming in. So the projection was a little bit lower just because the usage was down a little bit. Um, so we do also have a solution for the sewer fund um, to try to help that out a little bit because the projection at this point is we're going to end the year with 203000 but if we look at the 2015 budget, we're going to dip into that by about 134000 We can't do that. Just with operating. So again, we've got a solution for sewer that's fairly simple. Why don't you talk about oh, that? Yeah. Okay. Let's um, go ahead and basically, the ordinance as it stands right now, and there are extra copies of this information, I think, out yes, on the Yes, I put a whole bunch out there. Um, we have a readiness for service charge, and it's $11.80. Explain what it and is. And what that, what that means is, is that's the charge per month for every customer, whether they use anything or not. And that's just because if somebody decides to use the sewer system, they need to be able to and to have that service available at any time that they need to use it. That's the fee that we charge because we still have costs that are associated whether people are using it or not. Um, so we still have to have infrastructure improvements, everything like that. There's still overhead that's involved with that. However, the ordinance as it currently reads is that with that readiness for service charge, the first thousand gallons of water that goes through the sewer system is free basically or it's uncharged that is not the same with the way that our water rates are um, structured you're charged a readiness for service there and then it you pay um, I think it's 570 a gallon maybe or no 570 is the sewer rate I can't remember what the water rate is off the top of my head but you pay per per thousand gallons for everything that you use so what we're proposing with this is that the readiness for service would exclude the first thousand gallons and the first thousand gallons would be charged at the same rate that every other gallon thousand gallons over a thousand is which is five dollars and seventy cents mm -hmm. we have seventeen hundred thirty six total water sewer customers and we took a look at how many people normally have a usage of zero for whatever so that we're not overly stating what these um, potential revenues could be and there'd be 1,676 customers affected by this, and just that $5.70 a month for that first 1,000 gallons would give us approximately $9,500 worth of increased revenues per month, and the annual impact would be around $114,000. So that's a fairly um, easy change. Um, it's just about we wouldn't be giving free water for the sewer with the readiness for service charge. Sounds great. I think that Make makes, so. <clears throat> yeah, I think that makes more sense. I mean, if we can get that kind of money with that change, and then I don't even know at this point if we'll need to look at a rate increase, but yeah, we'll make it we part of the will. study. We'll, we'll keep it part of the yeah, study. I but mean, we can actually, be, be this and the other thing that Melissa will talk about in the solid waste fund, if council wants to proceed, we can actually bring the, the legislation to the next council meeting and you could have these enacted and they would take effect the second half of January. Um, so, you know, because it's 30 days past the, right, the, I think. the second reading. But I mean, that's why we're bringing these two tonight because they're easy fixes, they're minimal impact on the residents and they just make sense to could us. We, it, there's no way we could do it as a first of the year just as, as a simplifying through emergency language. We could. Or anything. It would 
you'd be in effect by the first of the year well if we don't pass it if we bring it to the next meeting we pass it at the first meeting in December We'd well that's the first that's the first yeah, so it would then it would be the first although so we it would actually work we could read it as an emergency yeah but you won't have to right so if, as long as you're as yeah. long as we're sure so about it's that I, it's 30 days from the first reading it's 30 days from the second reading which which will be on December 1st no yeah. what day are we today second yeah second you meeting give it a first second. reading on November 17th correct yes. yes so your second reading will be December, December 1st December 1st, 1st. Yeah. so it will so take effect January January 1st so you're good that's okay. On this particular situation that'll work out okay yeah terrific and then with the next uh, budget presentation I could have those additional revenues figured in and then you know, impact mean, numbers ran. we still need a rate study because even right. with this we are, we will be we, we won't be breaking even that's correct and we can but, at but least it'll this come gets you, it'll bring us a lot closer well <laughs> it, and it makes it, it it makes it consistent with the, the water else. ordinance mm -hmm. I mean you don't you don't give the first can of garbage for free and you don't give the first thousand gallons of water for free essentially this is a capacity fee that we're forgiving yeah no right I now. agree I think so. it's good and easy okay. thank you okay so um, does anybody have any questions about the sewer mm -mm. sewer department sewer fund okay so the very last one is the solid waste fund and this one is the most simplistic of all of the enterprise funds because we have charges for service and we pay Rumpke yeah those are the there's one in there's one out basically and there's um, no capital so the 2013 actual if you take a look at that very front page where it shows all the, the revenues and expenditures like right side by side um, it started out with a fund balance that was a little bit higher than 2012 but there were two invoices that weren't paid in 2013 and they were paid in 2014 so you have to keep that in mind because the 2013 and 2014 are both slightly skewed 2013 being less than 14 which is way more than what it should be because of those invoices not being paid in the, the timely manner that they should have been so I'm projecting that the year is going to end with a $15,000 um, fund balance and then if we look at what we normally bring in and what we spend on Rumpke we're going to dip in by 19,000 which obviously would put us in a negative fund balance situation which we cannot do um, but I have done side-by-side -side revenue and expenditure comparisons for the last two years and every single month it's it's been a losing game basically the, the there, I think that there's only been at two or three months in the last two years where we've actually been in the black in a, any given month and it's been by like two or three hundred dollars so mm -hmm. it's needed addressed for quite a while um, but is there now for this fund there's no capital associated with it so a small fund balance to just kind of right. keep things moving is fine but I would say having a having a fund balance that's around fifteen thousand dollars is really not that big of a deal for mm -hmm. that fund if that's what we can project out and safely like it doesn't matter that much if it's a low it doesn't make sense to have a hundred thousand no, dollars right, there. right right no. right but it's still we would still be dipping in we would still be going oh yeah negative, absolutely so. I mean we yeah I just I'm just saying I'm I am glad we're gonna address it but I don't think having like right. trying to figure out how much we should have in our electric fund that's tricky mm -hmm. this one it's pretty it simple. shouldn't be it shouldn't be above a hundred thousand it should no. stay it should be in the low well, amount 30 ish yeah so what's going to be passed around now is the proposal for the solid waste fee structure um, I took a look at this um, with Denise and we took a look at the rates and the number of customers in each tier level and what you've got the the top little table is what our current base rates are now this does not include the fuel surcharges which we have to keep separate because that's not something that we can plan for Rumkey tells us how much the fuel surcharge is it's passed directly onto the customer so the only thing that we can really tweak is our base rates so the top is the current base rates um, we thought that a 15 percent increase would be the what would make me the most comfortable which the majority of our customers are at um, well we call it uh, tier one which is at ten dollars and forty cents currently and that would go up to eleven ninety six so it would be a dollar fifty a month per customer 
and if you take a look at the, I've got a breakdown um, of the current rates, the number of customers which in, within each of the tiers, um, the monthly base revenue that we bring in, and then the proposed rates, and then the very bottom line that you see, that would give us an annual revenue increase of 29000 So if we did that, and we look at our 2015 budget, that would leave us of, with a fund balance of about ten thousand dollars at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So, and the thing to keep in mind about the solid waste, there are two things that you can never really be sure what they're going to be from month to month. One of them is the fuel surcharge, because it depends on fuel prices. The other thing that you can never truly be sure of is the tipping fees, because their tipping fees, and a tipping fee is what they get charged to tip the truck at the dump. Okay. And yes, Rumpke owns a dump, and yes, Rumpke owns the trucks, but they charge themselves internally different subsidiaries to, to work that out. So the tipping fee can also change periodically. So you don't want it to be, a, a like Lori said, you don't want it to be too horribly low, but you don't want it to be too horribly high. So. But aren't those fees direct, aren't those passed directly on, the, the fuel surcharge is passed directly on? Mm -hmm. So if it's higher one month yes. to, to, to consumers. So if it's higher one month, not, it's... Yeah, to us, but not necessarily to the consumer. Right. Our, just no, yeah, the, it's to us. Our fee to what we charge a village resident pays, stays the same every month based on this fee structure. But our charges from Rumpke can change every month. We do pass on the fuel surcharge. We Denise, Denise puts that oh. every month, and the fuel surcharge is passed oh, on. Oh, I thought we didn't. Oh, mm -mm. Okay. no, the fuel surcharge mm -hmm. is passed on. I'd have to look, I'd have to ask her exactly how that pro, I know that they send her an email every single month. I've got one of them in here um, about the fuel surcharge. Cause it is, it's, yeah, it's in, it's included in the per pickup price. So, like, they, the, so they just, they put it in as a per unit price. I'd have to see how, exactly how Denise does it, but I know that they put, they send her an email every single month of the fuel surcharge that gets tacked on. I, I wasn't aware of that one. I thought that stayed with us. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, got, I remember that discussion. They when, do. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So basically, though, so that means that the problem has not come with those surcharges. The problem has really come that our the our base, base rates has just been too low. Okay, and so the, this increase, this 15% increase, will give us a fund balance of, you said 10000 It's going to give us about an extra $29,000 on the year, but there was a gap of about right. 19000 so it'll, give a, it'll leave us with about $10,000 at the end of the year, which if we can carry that every year, we'd be fine. But well, I mean, we, we'll start with 15000 Mm-hmm. And then the twenty. Oh, that's yeah, that's true. We're going to start so with fifteen. We're going to carve in by nineteen. We're going to put another twenty-nine in. So we. Yeah, you're be, right. So it we would, would be at twenty-five be, yes. at the end of the year, exactly. which I think is perfect. That's yeah, probably about where we want to be. So you also would like that. I Does absolutely. That council wants this legislation. I, as I think well? it's. I'm yeah. comfortable with I support it. it. I mean, those those two funds together are generally going to cost a homeowner what ten. Well, it's going to be a dollar fifty and five seventy. So, so it's seven seven forty, and this is changed by ordinance also. Correct. Mm -hmm. So you'll bring both ordinances to the next yes. meeting, and we'll and both of them <coughs> be on time for January first. Correct. And, and what is our schedule, or what is your proposed schedule for um, looking at our solid waste contract? Um, the we I signed a one year extension in August of this year, so probably around April. I will start putting together a bid spec package to go out um, to the various um, the various haulers in the area to to bid on the on the spec package. And, um, I mean, there are there are several that are already asking when we're going to do it. And what would you expect to happen? That it would go above the ten forty, eleven forty, twelve forty. I mean, it's potential that it could. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you that um, the last time when I bid this out in Williamsburg last year, it actually um, the cost actually went down because one company came in with um, mechanical doing it with the mechanical trucks as part of their bid, so it actually the cost actually went down. 
So it depends on how they do their bids. I mean, we can make any spec that we, you know, any request we want. We can say, you know, do it with manual loads, or we can say do it with, uh, you tell us how much it'll cost with a manual load and how much it'll cost with a, with the uh, hydraulic arm load, you know, tell us all different kinds of things. I mean, they even, the company that came into Williamsburg even provided every uh, residence with a uh, one of those big toters um, that you just, you know, one of those great big, what is it? What are they? Sixty-gallon toter that you can never fill up in a month unless you've got like ten people in your house. Mm -hmm. okay. So. So and when will our current extension end? I so believe it's August. August. It was not August. long after here when I came here that I signed it. So. And there is one thing worth mentioning that that came up just today, um, which was too late to update in any of the figures. Um, the vac truck out of the sewer fund. The, although the purchase was in 2013 and the, all the documentation was signed like back in October of 2013, the actual first payment hit in January. And when I had done the original budget, I had only prepared for the payment that is due November 30th. And Susie, our accounts payable um, person, she had put in the invoice to be paid for the VAC truck payment for November 30th. And I looked and there wasn't enough budget in there because there were actually going to be two payments that were paid this year. So this that is not reflected in this projection, so it will be slightly lower than that. The VAC truck payment's about fifty-seven thousand dollars. So there be so two every year or is no, it just no, this that year? was just it was it was a fluke because the oh, I see. it was a timing issue with right. when the loan was actually right. processed. So it'll come through again the next November. Yes. And not like in January. Yes. So but it's one eighty seven. It's 187,000. So why is it, why is it so much higher than the 52,000 for this year for for 2015? Is that because, is are the two payments reflected in this? No, the two payments are not reflected in that. There's only one payment reflected in that because I didn't realize it until this morning when Susie went to put through the requisition. I mean, I guess I'm just confused then by why it's 187,000 projected for 2014 and it's down to. 53,000 in 2015 because that includes capital purchases as well oh okay so it's yeah. not just the jet back okay no, no that, it's not it's not where just the, the jet back is no taken okay place. okay so I just realized that this morning so I wanted to throw that out there um, so with that being said there will be a supplemental appropriation ordinance that will come before you all in probably the first meeting in December just to kind of clean up everything and end the year out where we should be, where everything should be. Is the jet vac of five years also? Yes. But you'll have made two payments. We've made three. So you've got three more. Like three. 16, 15, Let's 16, see, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 will be the last payment. So we got 15, well, 16, Well, the first one was 17. supposed to be in 13, but it happened in 14. Okay. 13, 14, 15. Okay. Right. So does anybody have any questions with any of the enterprise funds before we move on? We may want to keep this sitting here because we're going to be looking at the capital. Yep. Yes. And those obviously reflect Correct. This, these, what she just went over doesn't include any capital for 2015. Right. So Patty had asked everybody to take a slightly different approach towards the capital. Um, she asked that everybody, um, first of all, what, let me back up a little bit. What we did was for the tax budget, we did um, a capital a capital project list and basically we threw it out the window for budget purposes in the current budget environment. So everybody was asked to kind of start fresh. What, what do you need? Um, justify it and be willing to come with even more justification than what you just see um, here in these pages in the notes. So if there's any questions that you all have in relation to each specific request, um, the supervisors all attended with their justifications that are more detailed than what you'll see in the packet here. So I don't know if you want to add anything to this, Patty. I mean, no, I just, before, before I forget, because I will forget, and, um, I want to compliment my staff because they have been incredible through this. I ask them to cut their operating. I ask them to cut their their capital. And these folks that you see sitting right here, and it includes Judy because God love her, she did her part too. Um, you know, everybody sitting out here cut more than I ask them to. And you know, 
they understand the, the, the current environment and they are working really hard to, um, to make this work. So I just want to quickly give a compliment to my staff. <coughs> Thanks. Thank you, guys. So I guess I'll, I'll turn this over to, um, to council to kind of look through and to um, talk with staff that are here. Um, and then, Patty, why, do don't wanna, we, why don't we go to the water fund first? Um, because we know that we have, <laughs> we know that we have some capital expenditures that have to be done this year and have yes, to come out of do. the water fund, and um, it cannot support them. So you will be transferring money from the general <coughs> fund to the water fund to do that. And I think that any other capital discussions are going to be colored by what has to be done with water. So um, there are two things that have to occur in the water fund in 2015. One of them is the water plant consultant, which you know we're gonna we're gonna come up with um, that ranking later in the meeting tonight. Um, and the other thing that we're going to do um, is part of the water loop completion. Um, and Johnny and I have talked about that, and we're going to divide that into two projects. One of them is going to be the loop completion, and the other one's going to be the bottleneck, and we're going to put the bottleneck off. Um, and that kind of mostly divides them in half um, because the, the loop completion is 805000 but there's a $400,000 grant. So that leaves just over 400000 It's going to be needed to transfer from the water, uh, from the general fund into the water to do the loop completion. And we'll do the bottleneck in 16 if the money's there. The other thing that we have to, to think about moving is the money for the consultant. I have no idea what that's going to cost, but we talked and we did a little calculation today, and um, I'm going to say 400000 for that. Um, it may be a little bit more. It may be a little bit less. It may be substantially less. I don't know until I get into the negotiations. But council is, uh, probably needs to transfer 800000 from the general fund into the water fund to support those two projects. Um, Melissa, would you agree with that? Yeah, well, I mean, with the balance that we have right now, um, it's not going to support either of those things. Um, go and now, we'll look at the general fund, and, uh, and on the capital budget sheet, it does have the, fund, the, the projected um, beginning fund balances for each of those funds. So we're, we're thinking that we're going to have 100 or 1.7 million in the general fund but if we look at our um actually let's pull out the entire roll up the fund balance projections this is kind of the best one-stop shop here um so we're going to look at walking into 2015 with a 1.7 million dollar fund balance the general fund discussion that we had is projecting that we will spend into that with operations 305,000. So that would leave us with 1.4 million after operations. So if we're looking at another 800,000 coming off of that. Now you're down to 800,000. No, 600,000. Is that, is that below? I mean, is that, does that put us into fiscal? watch I mean what from, is it 25 percent from everything that I've kind of looked at everybody's saying five percent is safe so I can try to get a more definitive answer on that but um, yeah that's and in this realization with these two projects just came today yeah I sat up in bed at seven o'clock this morning and went oh crap <laughs> um, but I did call um, OPWC and ask about delaying the, the loop completion project and essentially the answer was yes you can delay it but if you apply for a grant for the water treatment plant it may put that at jeopardy because you haven't adhered to the timeline that you gave for the previous. I, so. I think we have to do it but we have to get, I mean, we're going to have to raise our rates probably pretty substantially. And so, um, you know, I wanted to have the discussion on 
the water fund first because there's no way around the two projects. Mm -hmm. um, and so council needs to be aware of that before we even get into any of the other stuff. Because anything that's um, requested within the general fund or any of the special revenue funds are directly supported by the general fund as well. So if we're looking at after those two things are taken into consideration, approximately $600,000 remaining in the general fund, that's going to impact the decision right. greatly for the other, the other funds. Right. The only, I mean, there are certain things that we can do out of other funds within the budget that are already there. I mean, um, Chief has in there a cruiser that we believe can be taken out of the FOJ funds. Um, we've been trying to research that. Um, and it's currently sitting in the general fund because we've kind of went back and forth with it and we're trying to find a solid answer to that, whether all of it can come from there, part of it. Mm -hmm. We've been working really hard to try to figure and that so, out. And so, you know, our thought was if that can come out of the FOJ funds 100%, then that's a no-brainer because there's more than enough money in there and it still leaves almost 40,000, I think, in there. There's almost 100 in there. Right, there's like 90, 97, Chief. Um, oh, um, right here. And so then the cruiser is right around 60. There's 88. We're, we're looking at 88,000 starting at 15. So that would still leave a decent balance. Um, we're looking for an answer on some of the things that Jason has requested because I think they can come out of a different fund that has more than enough balance in it, which is the parks improvement. Mm -hmm. um, but we're looking for, we haven't gotten our answer on that either. Related to the uh, water plant consultant, mm -hmm. if it was 400, <coughs> wouldn't that be across two years? I mean, it, we're not. Mm, yes and no. Um, it would be across two years, but most of it will come in the beginning okay. because of the design, because of the, uh, the, uh, the study and the design. Mm -hmm. I'd say 7525. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, that being said, if council keeps those two projects in mind, I think, Melissa, if you want to run through the capital stuff. Okay, um, the general fund, we've got the cruiser sitting there now. It, it could be moved. So I guess that what we were kind of looking for is how council feels about a cruiser if it comes out of the FOJ funds and if it can't come out of the FOJ funds how does council feel about that right um, because we're not real sure right now if we can take it fully from the FOJ if we can that's obviously the first preference but we're not real sure we need to double check that so um, we weren't sure if if it can go with the FOJ how everybody felt and if it can't and it has to sit with the general fund. How council, how council felt about that? Uh, I, I have a question. I, I'm I'm not clear on some of the other capital projects whether they're going to be coming out of the general fund or how much. Okay. For example, well, yeah, the library roof. Well, um, the library roof is already um, encumbered for this year. Yep. Facilities okay. improvement fund. There's okay. three hundred ten thousand dollars in there, and the library roof has already been encumbered out right. of that. So yeah, that's so done. that that's that's kind of a, a done deal. I mean, I know that, it's not that's, on there, that's but it's what I want. Yeah, and in fact, the legislation is in tonight. So basically, the the funds that are supported by the general fund in terms of capital would be the special revenue funds. Those would be direct transfers from the tr from the the general fund if they were to happen. Um, the capital projects in the purple, those those funds have, some money. have enough money to be able to support those projects without anything additional coming from the general fund. So basically everything in orange are the special revenue funds and oh. those those would come oh, okay. directly from transfers from the general fund. Whoa. Which ones would come from the tra transfer? The orange, orange, the special revenue funds. Two, uh -huh. two forwards. So there's a there's a backhoe for streets in the street fund. The total would be 106,000, but that would be financed out over three years, 35,000 each year. And then, actually, I think that that's a little bit lower because there was like an, a little bit extra that was going to come out of operations. Right. Um, right. So. And I think that's worst case scenario. Yeah, and I think Jason gave a further justification on that, so we can so talk about that. The so street fund has fifty-four thousand in it. Yeah. Would the thirty-five, the first thirty-five, would come out of that fifty-four? Yes, it could. 
It could. Yeah. The question would be the next two years. Right. After that. Then yes. We'll and if you want to, um, Jason has given you some extra on his, and, and there is one alternative in there for council to look at. But if you want to look at, um, if you want to look at the backhoe justification, Jason has. Um, I think that's your, his first page there. Oh no, that's the Jacobson. Well, Melissa, I mean, except for that backhoe project. The others have enough of a fund balance that we wouldn't have to do an additional transfer from the general fund? No, um, everything in purple, um, everything in purple has enough money to be able to, to handle those projects. Um, if you look at the facilities improvement fund, it says that it's got 54,000 left in there. That's because when we walked into 2014, it had 310 in it, and that's the library roof. Right. Um, there were three projects that were supposed to come out of that. There was the library roof, which was we had a year marked at 150,000. There was a drywall drainage project at the library for 10,000, which I don't know if that's still happening or not. Um, that was earmarked, and then there was 500 or 50 thousand dollars, excuse me, for the Sutton Farm. Okay. So basically, if we just look at the library being the only thing that happens we will have $54,000 left and $31,000 is being requested for other things. But, and this is, here's your, here's your but. Uh, um, Jason and I did talk about the dry well and he says that he d is planning on doing that, but what's the cost of that, Jason? Just the piping. Just the piping. And then whatever we have is, is operational. And this is at the library? Yeah. Yeah. And it, because the uh, catch basin is already there from the new storm line that they put in. All we need to do is, is find out where they're at. We're outlet from the roof when they get it done, and then we'll build us a drywall and then run the pipe to that drywall. Okay. And that's a project. That project has been needed because it's flooding out the neighbors. It's right. a real, it's been a real problem. So, so we, that's can, we can do that for the piping, which is we can do that ourself, yeah. a couple thousand, measure, depending on the, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, and the other thing is the Sutton Farm building, which we believe we have an alternative, but um, I know Johnny and Jason were working together to talk to some contractors. He's pointing at Johnny. So Johnny, what did you find out? I, I actually have two contractors that are looking at it, and they do quotes by Friday to me. Okay, but uh, here's, here's what we came up with. If, you're, if you look at the salt, salt bin right now, so you're standing in front of it, you're looking at the salt bin, and there are, are there three bins or two? Uh, there's actually three. Okay, there's three bins. What we're talking about is putting two off of each end, just two more bins off of each end, just basic, you know, three sides in a roof, open front building. And one, you got a ballpark of 30, 30 that was for, for the, the building. That was for the building. I got a a package uh, from Menards that we could buy the building for a 44 by 88 with seven bay doors, two man doors okay. for 32000 mm -hmm. and then we had to pay labor and put it up. So it's a package deal. So wait a minute, That's this isn't on here. It's not on there because we didn't have the numbers. Correct. We don't have the numbers. But it would come out of the... Um, we just had crew quarters in there for Sutton Farm. Right. It would come out of the um, the fifty four thousand that's left from this year if we move forward. So you wouldn't have that money to move forward. But so this would be instead of the more expensive building we were looking at, mm -hmm. and we need this to protect our investment in all that equipment. We have we have at least four pieces of equipment that are sitting out right now and that are least. worth a lot more than that. Um, I think I think it's pretty important, and I I, I know it, it it cashes that out. But I, I it, we can't have that equipment, expensive equipment that we've already invested tax dollars sitting out. We have to protect that investment. And I I guess I'm, again, you know, we had the problem before when we put Sutton Farm out for bids. We didn't get bids because we didn't have enough information. I'm concerned that. You know, we're just looking at a package of materials, and then how's it going to get constructed, and how are we going to know we what the we bids? We actually talked to an architect, uh, and he's willing to work with us on Stanton drawings. And then the contractor that we have talked to is giving a price for labor to put the barn up, and then the uh, electric department and the street department would help with drilling the holes, 
uh, with the line truck and lifting the rafters, doing as much of the labor ourselves as we can to do any construction. All right. At and, cost. and you said so this does have doors or is it it, does. it has seven uh, 10 by 12s which is big garage doors and it has two man doors but then what we're eliminating is is the insulation which could come later it's eliminated in concrete we just put it on stone uh, the big thing is to get the equipment inside uh, out of the weather okay. immediately and and the first thing you talked about was just some kind of a lean-to. Lean-to's on the side of the salt bar. And I'm That's wondering. one option is the lean-to on the side of the salt barn. Right. And does that take care of the problem? It gets it. It gets it, it in does. an open. It gets it in an open shelter. It doesn't okay. get it in a in a closed pull the door down okay. kind of shelter. Which vehicles are we talking about? Uh, we have the lawn tractor. We have the street sweeper. We have the backhoe. And we have two 450 trucks and one uh, meter van. Okay. And at the at the end of the day, where do you think this building? If you if you do the building actual building piece, where do you think it's going to come? It would probably be at the end of where the salt barn is. But what what? How much? How much is it going to oh, cost by the time you pull it all together? Well, if we buy the package, you know, you you could be in the neighborhood of forty to forty two thousand dollars if you buy the the package and then with, with the labor we would probably be another twelve thousand dollars but the labor could be offset by the village crew we so have maybe fifty thousand well no, no sixty seventy five thousand no no, no, no I, the I, package is thirty thirty two 30, yeah thirty two. Oh, okay so you well, add ten to twelve on top so of fifty that. yeah well, you're talking about 44, but that's without us putting any labor in. Right, plus we got to have the architect that's willing to stamp the Yeah, quality. but he said for a stamp fee. Right, for a stamp fee. I'd so rather just think about 50 as opposed, just because yeah. it's yeah. a little uncertain. So so if we think of it as 50. Right, I mean, it's, it's not going to be, it, it's not going to be the concrete floor, heated, insulated building that we had hoped for, but it will serve the purpose of getting everything out of the way. And, and we'll be able to put electric in there to where the units that do need to be plugged in for the heater blocks, uh, we can do that as the electric crew. We can go ahead and run the electric in there. Run the lights. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the other project at Sutton Farm then. Okay. To the crew quarters. The crew quarters. Here's, and when we say crew quarters, we're not talking about like a, a whole new building. What I'm talking about for, for the crew quarters is a shower with a washer and dryer. And here's the reason. These two crews get into, and occasionally Joe's crew too, so they get into raw sewage. Mm -hmm. It's the only way to say it. And they have nowhere to get cleaned up before they go home. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a safety hazard that they are taking this home to their families. Um, you know, they, there have been days where these guys have, have literally bagged themselves with garbage bags <coughs> to drive home to their families uh, with this stuff on them. And so all we're talking about is buying, enclosing a little space, buying one of those prefabbed shower things. Um, Johnny says he can run a pump that runs the, the wastewater out so you don't have to put any drainage um, in it and buying a basic washer and dryer for them to throw this stuff in. Um, it's, you know, it's not going to expand any crew quarters. It's not going to give them, you know, a, a great place to sound. It's strictly a place for them to get the raw sewage off of them before they go home. Mm -hmm. So that is the other project out there that I really think needs to be done because I'm just, I, I'm just really upset that these guys are going home like this. And that's the 12, 12, uh, that's five. the 12, five. Okay. And if I heard Melissa say that the purple, well, the purple would support itself unless you take out the 50,000 to, yeah, to build the other okay. building. Okay. So yeah. if I'm understanding you so correctly, I, then right. the, the, see, cause we were, we were looking at the 54, 671 in the, uh, street fund. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. That's for the backhoe. Okay. So I mean, that's where you're talking about up there now. We're okay. we're, we're down we're to, to okay. we're down to facilities so, improvement. So the uh, 
the building at say 50 mm -hmm. plus uh, 12 would be 62. 62, yeah, around 62. Okay. Five. And that would come from where again? The over, well, I mean, so there's, there's only a balance it would of have 54 to in there, so if we were to support okay. gotcha. any more, it'd have to come from. Gotcha. Plus, okay. there's an additional two projects that are right. about $20,000 worth of projects. Well, and the pool guardhouse roof could could likely come under the Parks and Recreation Fund, Improvement well, Fund. Yeah, I was just going to ask why not. What are the limitations on that? Well, I had, I had asked all the supervisors for all of their input, <laughs> and um, Jason had labeled them, and I was just plugging them in, and then after I'd already submitted it for packet, I was like, oh, we could mm -hmm. likely take that from somewhere else. So, yeah, so well, and, and even Pottery Shop, couldn't that all, that's recreation. Well, that's true, too. I mean, Jason, how do you feel about taking those two things out of the... Yeah. Parks and Recreation, put them in Parks and Rec. Okay. Um, well, and that does make that does make sense to me budget wise as well. So, yeah, yeah I well they're both they're recreation, both parks so I don't and know. recreation. So there's there's no real limitation on Parks and Recreation fund except that it's spent on Parks and Rec. Well, we do have we've got the, we've got the mower sitting in there right now, um, and that's the one where. We've had to confer with a contact at the state auditor's office mm -hmm. to see if that's actually something we can do. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, she said she was reluctant to give me a, a definite answer until she looked into a couple of things. So we're not 100% sure on that one. That's the only one that's is that is that used for anything other than um, what what is it used for example around our electrical poles or anything like that? Is no, it purely? A large, it's a large scale mower. Right. Yeah, it, yeah. it can't be used in smaller areas yeah, like it'll around just the electric. Be for our parks, our big parks, okay. Not okay. Okay. Well, so since we're talking about that, I mean, related to the uh, the garage or whatever we're going to call it, I mean, could any of those vehicles be tied into this? I mean, I heard the mower is one of the things we're putting under there. So, can some of those funds be diverted that way? Because they house that equipment. Yep. I would think it would be, if if we're going to use it to house that those that equipment, I mean, it's the same as housing, you know, a dump truck or a line truck. I definitely want to look into it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. yeah that's instead of giving off the top of it. Yeah, I definitely want to look okay. into that. Okay. But that is, I mean, I would think it's a possibility. Yeah. So we'll look, we'll have to. I have to look at that answer, but yeah, the two, the two other, the drop ceiling for the pottery shop and the pool guardhouse could definitely, I think, come mm -hmm. out of yeah, we could out of there, those. and that way those those two just they get done just out of another fund. Is that um, are those based on just eyeball estimates, or is that the eight thousand and the ten five? Are those did we get actual? Well, estimates? Based as a per square foot, and that's what I called the the contractors, and that's what they gave. Okay. Um, the pottery shop is uh, you have to replace new uh, the whole thing replace it you can't just fix the the missing no it'll uh, actually be new lights and everything included in that new drop ceiling everything is, has been deteriorated so bad that mm. you know as some of the yeah. pictures will, yeah. will show you that it, it's close to falling in okay. so it looks pretty bad so is this the time to ask about some of these other capital projects as well? Uh, I'm curious about the concession trailer. How will that work? Well, he, he, that we can actually put that off if we want for uh, another year. Mm -hmm. The thought was we're going to start ball leagues back up down at Comp right. Park. We've fixed the fields. We have teams that are interested in coming here to play. They're willing to pay money. We can increase our revenues. Okay. And we're also talking about um, taking the pool management back. We have a little bit of research more to do on that. We have until the end of November to let Dayton Pool Management know if we want to exercise our one-year option. Mm -hmm. But we're definitely going to start some ball leagues back up down there and increase the revenue. And the thought was that the concession trailer could be down by the ball fields um, for people to get drinks and snacks and things. That said, we can do that next year if it's 
the, what we choose because right. but the uh the village would run it or we'd rent it rent it to folks well there, there's a couple different discussions going on um in fact today jerry suggested maybe the boosters would want to run it mm -hmm. um i would actually prefer it not be the village that runs the actual operation just because the manpower involved and the stock mm -hmm. um but that said you will probably make a little bit of money off of it if you do it except that it, i mean we are not going to get any group to be there Every the length right. of time that the pool is open and we, so right. we've got to decide is this about concessions for baseball and right. and the if we if we want to if we want to offer the kids that are coming to the pool the people that are coming to the pool food during the day while they're there <coughs> swimming and being active that's going to I think I don't think it's going to work out of a concession trailer we're going to have to have a different well option we would actually run both of them you'd run the one up at the pool but the ball fields are going to run at a different on a different schedule oh I didn't realize you were talking yeah. about keeping two separate right two separate yeah. what why don't we get machines why don't we get vending machines we could do that too and you actually make money off of vending machines mm -hmm. you know they can I would like to look into that they can take them out in the winter and mm -hmm. you know, um, we can make some calls about and that. And you can make, they, you can get some pretty decent food and, and vending. I mean, you could basically put in whatever you want. Okay, we can look into that. So. We should, um, you know, people who, um, it used to be if you died and you left a big estate, we got a nice big chunk of your right. estate. Yeah. Um, and we need, I mean, it doesn't look like we're going to be changing the current taxes in Ohio anytime soon. So we really do need people to be thinking about legacy gifts to the village, particularly for things like parks and recreation. You value these parks. You know, put us in your will. <laughs> I just, I don't know how to say it. And you will feel better about yourself. There's all kinds of good reasons to do it. But especially for things like parks and, parks and rec, um, uh, you know, if you want to have the Sutton Farm crew quarters named after you, we could probably do that too. That would be great. Um, but I think we do need to be thinking about somehow encouraging people to realize that um, the state kindly obliged us in giving you us uh, giving us a part of your estate before they no longer do that. So it mm -hmm. has to be voluntary. So consider it. Um, making it a voluntary donation. Well, I think I don't think it's a bad idea to consider formalizing a program working with the Community Foundation. Maybe we can have Rachel um, McKinley, our treasurer, and, and Melissa and Patty work on that, formalizing some kind of a relationship and a could think of it a in terms fund of green, that they can green see, space, yeah, that they parks can and see rec, when those kinds of funds that are very visible. The library fund, there's many things that we'd like to be able to do. Um, all of those would be great place for bequest, working with people mm -hmm. on bequests. Yep. Great idea. So, okay, I mean, we can we can take the concession trailer out for now. I mean, if folks come there to play ball and they know there's not going to be anything, they'll bring a cooler with them, you know, some drinks. Um, and and it might be it, see because I was I was th not realizing you were still keeping when we talked earlier I wasn't realizing you were still keeping the concessions up at the pool, it also could be an opportunity for a for a truck a, a food truck to come. Mm -hmm. That's true too. I mean at least yeah. for this first year until we figure out yeah. Yeah. if it's just if it's just if it's for I mean you know there's going to be a tournament that would get them out to yeah. just sit there yeah. all day while there are kids playing at the pool right. they probably wouldn't be into that but right. For a specific tournament, they would. The, the long term goal is to make Gaunt Park a place where the families can come, spend the whole day, you know, maybe a little picnic area up on the top back half of the sled riding hill. The kids can swim at the pool, the parents can play ball on the field. You can make it a whole day there. Um, right. That's the ultimate goal several years down the road. And I think it's a, a very interesting idea. I guess the other thing we could be doing over this year is talking to people and seeing how they would use it would there be a lot of interest in renting it from boosters and other organizations so we I feel like we're kind of jumping around this sheet a lot I kind of like to get back into an orderly um, so um, why don't we go back because we never really made a decision on the cruise or why don't we yeah. just start? let's 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 finish parks and I think okay. we should just finish parks and rec is there anything else um, 
on there that anybody has any questions on the parks and rec, the Ellis Park improvements? Are we doing, is there anything in there for the bridges? No. Uh, no, I don't think okay. there's anything out there for the bridges because we're, we were working on the other funding. But that said, um, because we might, I don't know. Jason, do you have any thoughts? We're just waiting on work from Roger Bill so we can get started on this. I mean, as soon as I hear from them, and then we can work out a plan. But that's in this year's budget already? No. Yes. Well, well, 25 grand of it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, Roger is drawing up for us a, a presentation to um, a lady who may potentially make a donation as a memorial to um, her daughter who passed away. Mm -hmm. And so, if she's willing to make a donation between that, the money that we had set aside, and um, the money that the tree committee has set aside, we would ha probably have enough to do both bridges and a nice little walk path between them out there. Um, and so Roger's drawing that up for us as it said that we can present it to this. And a butterfly garden, right? And, and a butterfly garden on each side of the walkway, yes. So, so the the fence, the football fence, or soft football soft fence, geez, softball fence. Um, that's that's for the girls' softball field, or what's? Yes. Has okay. That's a safety concern uh, because if we do bring softball back and we don't put something around those metal poles, um, it's going to get pretty interesting. So is this? I mean, are we talking about creating an outfield? Are we? Talking so yeah, it'll totally be like, enclosing or just doing the outfield? It'll be an outfield just like the, the baseball diamonds. So are track. you going to keep the? Are you going to keep the? <laughs> are you doing anything to modify the current baseball field? Are you going to enclose that more completely? No, that will just have a warning track around it because you still have kids running into the fence. Okay. But both diamonds will have a fence and, and a warning mm -hmm. track to promote safety for, okay. these, for these young kids and, and potential softball players. What kind of charges can we? Can we anticipate if we're bringing back these teams? What, like, I, what are the? Like, probably so this is fourteen thousand. How how long does it take to make back? Well, you're pr like you're probably talking three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars a team. Um, you could probably run six teams a night. Uh, well, and then somebody a buy. So you're talking about seven teams on a night. Run two or three nights of leagues. So even if you're only talking about fourteen. Uh, 14 teams two nights a week um, and then you're talking about $400 <laughs> a team that's $11,200 you're gonna have to pay umpires and buy balls and that's all you're gonna have to well, do. Plus you'll have my plan is to hopefully have a um, tournament a, a month right so have a great big tournament where we have round you know, robins 10, 10 plus teams coming down and Okay. So this we could aren't really right. talking about hiring the umpires. Usually the teams do that, don't they? The, the leagues. Well, the leagues. typically, typically you, you being the owner do. Um, wow. They go out there and get their own sometimes, but to make an official softball tournament, we need to have I, these umpires come So that they give us the fees, and out of their fees, we, we pay them. We yes. pay them. Yeah. I'm more concerned about the management. I'm more concerned about the logistics of trying to manage hiring umpires, making sure they're there. I this is that is I mean why it's, it's just us getting into something. I think it's great. I love the idea of using those fields, but it's it's a whole level of management that we haven't done before. But um, that's why the if we choose to do this, um, my recommendation to council would be that we make um, what's some Sam's last name? Stewart. Stewart. And it was an S. Samantha Stewart, who is our part time person downstairs in the Bryan uh, Youth Center, uh, make her full time to handle all of the leagues, the pool, and uh, the youth center, and oh. maybe give her. And a, so, a offsetting seasonal. the costs of the Dayton pool management, you're kind of suggesting you think between the increased revenues that she can do both and. Yeah. And, and she's. Okay. We've talked to, I've talked to her briefly about it, Melissa and I have, um, because Jason was on vacation. She's checking into, you know, what it would take to become a, a certified pool manager um, and help her decide if she would even be willing to do that. But it, that said, even if we don't take the pool back, I think Sam could handle that scheduling of the umpires, because usually what happens is you give them a set night. 
Um, well, and, can, and two, we're not reinventing the wheel. I mean, we used to right. have softball leagues back in the day, and they were very successful as well as the pools, mm -hmm. you know, quite successful. So um, we're not reinventing the wheel, so to speak. It's just kind of following and not falling back into some of the traps, right. mm -hmm. you know, that existed before. What did happen? Why did they stop? Do you know? Well, the, the ball diamonds just got too bad. Too bad. Nobody yeah. wanted to slide on them. And then other groups wanted to go to Cedarville, wanted to go to Beaver Creek. There was a lot of, of uh, places to go play softball. And now it's kind of coming the other way, where there's not so much, just like the pool, where there's not so much. So we right. really gained from do, a couple leagues. Do we absolutely have to put this fence in? I mean, is there a way for us to maybe get through a season, see what the use is, see what the interest is? Um, see what the market is. I mean, I don't, have we done any research to know what the market is for, that we're going to actually be able to have? We, two nights a week. We haven't even um, put it out there yet and that we're officially going to do it and we already have people asking to come here. We already have four teams, I think is what Chris said, that definitely want to come here. The fence is a safety issue, right? Here, because you have your metal poles. They're not wooden anymore, so it's a safety issue. And just adding padding around the poles is not going to be sufficient. So is the fence going to go around the, the ball field itself? Is that the idea? Yeah, around the softball field, but inside the pole line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is the way it is now. I mean, that's part of where the outfield right. fence and the boys or the big field came from. Wow. I mean, 14,000 isn't. It seems like we, it's it, that much. because we could have the, there's the potential for it to be offset by fees. I think I'm, I'm willing to, we need, we need increased revenues. And if this is a potential revenue source, spending a little money to try to get that revenue seems like it might be worthwhile. And what about those fields being used for soccer and being used for ultimate Frisbee? Hopefully there's not going to be. I mean, we're not going to promote it at all. I mean, they can use the, the soccer field by the Little League Diamond for that, um, but we're not going to promote it. Adult soccer is being played there? Well, I, I mean, we, uh, all the soccer goals are currently out of there, so there's no soccer being played there. No, no, no. No, no they is. moved that all, all up yeah. to the uh, fields by the high school. High school, and yeah. They, and then they rearranged those fields to accommodate the regulation type. <coughs> so. right. And there is no ultimate frisbee being played there? Well, I, you can play ultimate frisbee there. I mean, with, if we include the fence, then you're going to have to worry about running into the fence, but you can always move it to the soccer field. There's, a, there's enough. To the, you're play. saying the south, the, the east yeah. field, okay. Yeah. The south, the, the eastern part of The open area. Yes. I'd, I'd like to see us move forward with it myself. I I'm would. Kind of like, uh, with the I fence. Think, no, yeah. Not the concession trailer. Right. Do the, do the fencing. Fence. And, uh, and let's just try to make this a, try to make this move towards revenue, mm -hmm. revenue positive mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. Well, we also have an excited group, you know, behind the baseball and softball too. So, I mean, I think that's part of the thing is, right. you know, that they've got to help make this work. Right, and as yeah, and we should make them clear that we really need this to be res revenue positive, and right. that we're we're tr we're really looking for ways to increase our uh, our our. We'd like it a kind of an endowment in this Parks and Rec. So if you know they're they're going to be the kind of people who would be maybe helping us uh, make that case. Yep. Um, I have some questions about some other items in that area, like the. Um, lines on the pool I mean is there something else that could be done to uh, get the um, sharp edges off without paying $25,000? It's not just the lines it's the whole pool surface itself. We've got uh, I know the pictures really didn't show up but there's one track that is between the uh, deeper part and the deepest part where the, the uh, boards are. Um, all of this is going to have to be sandblasted down to the original and then epoxied with those joints. If not, those joints are going to continue to expand and then we're going to end up having to build a new pool. I mean, that's what it essentially boils down to because there'll be so much water loss 
that everything beneath it is going to just wash out. Is there water loss now? There is some water loss. Okay, uh, I had a question about the aggregate around the pond at Ellis Pond. Can you say what your thought, what your plan is about that? Uh, currently, we have uh, busted pieces of concrete sidewalk that are there now, and um, we, being Parks and Rec, when we go out there and mow, we've seen plenty of kids fall in from standing on that. It's just like crossing the spillway. So what I am proposing is um, adding number two stone aggregate around there to try to make it look better, to prevent the, the, the washout of the embankment, and to promote safety because it's a lot safer for those kids to stand on that than it is those slippery pieces of concrete. Is it possible, Jason, and this is not something that you and I, we did talk about the aggregate, but not, can we do it in phases? Can we do like a half and a half? Sure. I mean, so essentially we could cut that in half and sure. do half this next year. Everything ballpark included to, to, to do everything. So the aggregate, is that going all the way around the pond or just this? It will go all the way around the pond. Yeah. Where now is, grass isn't it it's grass but there's pieces of pieces broken up concrete, concrete yeah. if you if you if you look around the edges you can see them periodically mm -hmm. here and there like there was one over on the far side by where mm -hmm. that tree comes right down and the kids just walk down and they stand on it and then they end up falling in the oh. they, you know they slip and end up falling okay. in, the, in the pond and they could get hurt you know they could fall on the on the pieces of concrete I mean so those will be removed are you going to take them out or are you going to? These pieces of concrete will we'll dig out, but we can utilize them somewhere else where the washout is, is being more severe, and then we can just cover them up with the aggregate that we're proposing. Okay. So, is that, so the $12,000 is a ballpark for purely materials? Would, it, would this be work that the crew could? Yes. Do? This is just what it would cost for us to go and pick it up. Or, yeah, to pick up the material. It doesn't cost, I mean, it doesn't calculate, you know, mileage as far as fuel or as our time. It's just the materials in mm -hmm. And I would just, for $6,000 or whatever, I would just say, go ahead. I think you yeah. do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. think it's, we've got, that is actually a relatively healthy fund. So, and it'll just enhance the part. Finish the mm -hmm. whole thing. Yeah, because yeah, essentially what we're trying to do is enhance Ellis Park the way we're trying to enhance Collins Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. a resource that doesn't get much use except for a you know, makeshift dog park, but I think we're, we're trying to change that. Yeah, okay. Okay, and don't say those Where words. Connected to Ellis Park. <laughs> oh. People do. I know. It could have been more formalized. I know, it could have been they nice and it could have had a fence. And and separated, but no. <laughs> Mm -hmm. they just let them run loose. Uh, that's not All right. Any yeah. other questions about that's the parks? Oh, parks and Rec and Free <laughs> Fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, we somebody. I think the Patty cruiser. just said. Let's go up, back up to the police cruiser. I mean. So the qu the question was, if it can be taken 100 percent out of FOJ funds, is that what council wants to happen? Yes. And then the second part of the question is, if it cannot be taken 100% out of FOJ, and we think if it's not, then it's 30, it's 50-50, right, Chief, 30 and 30, because of the federal state. Yeah, the state seized funds have different parameters on them than federal seized funds. There's a thing called some planning, which if we were to use federal seized funds, I would want to get an opinion on before we went forward with that. State seeds fund, which we believe is the majority of the seeds funds, should be fine. Um, again, there should be sufficient funds in there. Okay, so if it cannot be taken out of the FOJ funds, does council want to proceed with a purchase? And if you don't want to proceed with a purchase next year, be aware that you, you will be off of the rotation. Chief tells me they, ca they can get by for another year if that's what we need to do. Um, there is a plan, um, potentially take the, the black car, repaint it white. Um, you had, you'd have to change out the back seat, you'd have to put a cage in it, um, but you could make it another patrol car. If 
about seventeen thousand dollars that would be patrol car ready, and then um, to see if there's a seized vehicle or something that whoever becomes the permanent chief would have access to for for purposes. He wouldn't be a marked car that would get him to and from places, etc. Sounds like there's a lot up in the air on this one that maybe when we come back, when you come back for more final budget discussions, you could, you will have some answers. Mm -hmm. Is that? Can I um, just comment that I've heard from several people at the, the forum that we had and just around town, people are not that happy with the current look of the police cars. They went from looking pretty staid and they kind of started looking like race cars yeah. and it makes people uncomfortable and I don't know if since we've kind of gone this route and we need the kind of interchangeable parts etc but I just want to voice that because I've heard it quite a bit and that has partial partially it well it has a lot to do with what's on the state bid um, a few years ago the state bid went from being crown victorias uh, to being Dodge Chargers and mm -hmm. it's a completely different look and so it kind of depends on what's on the state bid as yeah. far as what you get in a in a cruiser so i wonder but the also design the on paint, it, that's just tape that can be the, the paint it? job i think oh, also then, okay contributes. is it tape or is it but i agree it, it is partly just the model it does look more like right, a, yeah. a speedster uh -huh. mm -hmm. and it seems to it encourage is, a yeah. kind of like high-speed chase feeling <laughs> I don't want and yes. a lot of people have yeah. talked to me about well, right. but I yeah. wonder if if the paint job the tape put on it if we could consider a different design to help on the decals, the decals. Yeah, the yeah. decals. well the decals are what we make them I mean essentially you order them based on what you want them to be so right. that is certainly something that could be right. yeah I mean looked at. it is designed to look to look speed I mean there is no question I mean they were very low-key and I, I am not particularly happy with them either. Okay. Well, we can look at that when we. Okay. I, I have another question about the police cars. They have this thi black thing on the front of them, like a. What is, uh, is that like. The push bar. Push bar. What's that for? The push cars. Um, potentially, if you're in a pursuit, um, it is a way of. If you hit a slow enough speed and you're in a safe condition to actually put the fleeing felon in a position where they're not running anymore. Sometimes when they run, these guys will, and I've seen them hit homes. I mean, it is, pursuits are very, very dangerous. Um, it is an option that, and it's, you know, it's, it's not a great profession, and there are no absolutes, but it's a way to stop a pursuit under certain conditions. Well, one, is it worth pursuing? And two, can you explain how it stops the pursuit? Well, the, um, I think it, it, the pursuit policy, you have to be an aggravated felon. In other words, you've had to commit an aggravated felony. A murder would be such a thing. An armed robbery. Um, not pursue a murder is sort of what you're, you're getting into classifications. Um, there is a policy that's drafted. I can let you see it. So there are things I believe that are worth pursuing, but not everything is. And and how, do you have any idea of how often? Um, well, if we have a murder or an armed robbery, how often that happens? Well, it doesn't have to necessarily. Here's what you need to keep in mind: it doesn't have to necessarily occur here. Yeah, it can occur in a neighboring jurisdiction, and they come our way. I mean, so. Just when you say how often do we have it, keep in mind that it's not just us, it's conceivably everyone in the immediate vicinity around us that could have these incidents and they're coming through Yellow Springs. I mean, so. tonight we're talking about capital budget, and I think <laughs> let's, let's right. save okay. the police discussion okay. for the future. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, Okay, so I mean, I let's just wait on the police cruiser. Let's just wait till we find out about okay. FOJ funds, mm -hmm. and we can discuss that. So, Jason, the backhoe. Um, we do we have two options? I understand from Patty, you, you presented us with a couple of options. Yeah, the, the first option is to uh, go ahead and fix the one that we have. Um, and there, you did. This is fixes. Fixes that need to be done. I know this sounds like a lot, and 
I know that we were supposed to do the bare minimum, but all of these for talking with the gentleman that works on these are safety issues. Mm -hmm. So to get it working properly, it will be a little over $13,000. However, this is a aging tobacco that's been sitting outside. It does not include the salt that has made its way inside the radiator, uh, the oil pan, or the tires that need to be replaced. Um, and what would those things add additionally to the 13.7? I don't know. I wouldn't even know how much the radiator would be. The radi well, the radiator is like almost four grand, and the tires are, I think it was 5,400 just for the back. So another 10,000. And how much life do you think that's going to get get you? You just never know. Not with a, an older machine. I mean, because Johnny and I are running into it's harder and harder to find a replacement parts for these older pieces of machinery. Uh, just like the Ford tractor. I mean, the Ford tractor, if you look at the, the uh, alternator, we had to take a Ford truck alternator and make modifications to it. That's why there's 150 washers on it. Um, so it's, it's harder and harder to find these replacement parts for these aging vehicles. Do we? The backers are 1982. Do we ever go to Ritchie or the, that, that auction house on 70? I mean, do we explore using, purchasing um, gently used equipment? And I did look, it, when Jason came with this, I, I did look on Craigslist and uh, there's another one called, um, about, I can't remember the name of it, but it's used heavy equipment. It's a used heavy equipment website. And I mean, you're gonna come up with at least that much to to purchase one of those used pieces that you're going to come up with the, the 25,000 at least and you don't know how many hours it's got on it or if they've taken care of it. What about eGov? Is that something we use? Um, it's not it's government bids it's not I don't think it's eGov. eGov is our um, yeah, utility yeah, billing yeah. process oh. uh, software. But but do, they have, do they have used equipment on the government that, contract. Do, but it's like what we're well, we it would be this piece. Well, of I mean, yeah. I just know that auction house that I drive by that's on 70. I mean, that they have looks like you know maybe foreclosed equipment or you know repossessed equipment. I mean, it looks like great stuff. It doesn't look like stuff that somebody has necessary. And and you know, major contractors probably replace their can afford to place replace their stuff more frequently. So. I mean that would be my request. Well, most you know, of, most of the equipment. Sorry, uh, most of the equipment that Johnny and I use. If you go to certain places like that, these have twelve thousand, thirteen hundred hour. I mean thirteen thousand hours on them. So basically, you're getting a machine that's been gently painted or whatever, but you're not getting yourself any deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, so I guess I'm confused about this handout. Uh, it says new wheel loader to replace backhoe. And then it's got the wheel loader. Is that the backhoe? This I, is, uh, yeah, this is. Uh, this I don't is see a, wheel loader anywhere yeah, on here. Yep. This is the wheel loader. That's the backhoe. Right. Yeah. I see that. Is and that, then, oh, this, and that is the back, it's called backhoe for streets. Yes. Right. On this form. Right. I'm just wanting to. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And that's what you guys have already approved earlier on this year. We already approved the wheel loader? Yep. You already okay. approved 100,000. So we added 33,000 for the next three years. Oh, I see. Right, right. But it hasn't gone out this year? It hasn't gone out. I've been advised in to, 2014. Come, yes, to come again to yeah. you guys mm -hmm. to see if you guys want me to proceed forward because we finally yeah. found mm -hmm. something. And most of the equipment that I found is the reason why it took me so long is because it was a 2008 or older model and it was going to cost us 87 $88,000 to purchase and you're getting a brand new piece of machinery for 106. Right. Well, and your selling point on the case was the rear engine compartment. Is yes. that correct, Jason? Yes. Um, the forward engine compartment on the old backhoe is the reason why the radiator is probably going to be replaced because all that salt gets compacted in there. Mm -hmm. well, on this new wheel loader, the engine compartment's in the rear, so there's less, less susceptibility for that salt to get there. Right. Also, you're dealing with a bigger bucket. Um, the John Deere has a 1.75 cubic yard, and this one has a 2.5 cubic yard. 
so your guys aren't wasting their time loading up the, the trucks that are getting out, getting salt, getting back out on the roads faster. Um, and then there's a lot more that we can do mm -hmm. utilizing this piece of machinery. Right. Um, so this yeah. was budgeted for 2014, but we didn't we, we didn't encumber those, so and it would have been encumbered out of this same fund, so that it doesn't make any difference on the 2014 budget. Is that a way to understand it? Essentially, yes, um, because if if council wants to proceed with it, we can order it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem is it's gonna you're gonna still have two more payments after that that you have to that we have only out of the right 54, and, this, and the state highway fund I mean so you're saying the first payment will come out of the state or could come out of the state highway fund so that's that was that was I mean, the that's thought um, Patty and I were trying to be really creative in all of this to try to figure out you know how we can try to spread things around or alleviate one fund and maybe help mm -hmm. with another one we, this was another option that we were going to look into. Um, this past but you don't week, know for sure if it's possible. We're we're leaning towards it. It would likely be possible. I, I don't think that the state highway fund though had enough to fully support a full payment. Twenty seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it only had twenty seven in it. It wasn't a full payment. Mm -hmm. So we but were just trying. It would get us pretty close to a full payment. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we would. We, we, well, it, yeah. So I, I support this. Um, and did I hear the old backhoe is in 1982? Yes. Okay. So well, hopefully this will last. Oh, hopefully this will last quite a long Sounds time. Like and this will be covered by yeah, if we. It will go inside. So she means. I think she means in inside. Yeah. It'll be yes. inside. Be next in that. To the salt bin. It's already there, and then the street sweeper will go into the new. Oh, okay. And do, do we um, um, do we sell our old equipment? I mean, do, can we get some money out of our old equipment? Yes. Actually, that old backhoe we can trade in. Mm -hmm. um, I know when Johnny was given the numbers, it was slightly higher. When I talked to the guy, he said roughly about eight grand. So if we trade that old John Deere in, I mean, it's if we trade that in and we've got money from the state highway funds, we might make that first payment. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not going to be substantial. I mean, because we're dealing with aging equipment. So this, so cost. this price, this this hundred and six thousand does not include the trade in. It's not reduced with a trade in. And this so. the, I'm not asking for any more money that the council has right. not no, already it's, approved. No, that's fine. That Absolutely, that's fine. we we appreciate that. Oh. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm for it. Yeah, I'll, I and, see. How and long whatever you can do to, to obviously, you know, it, if it's better to trade it in or if it's better for us to sell it separately, because sometimes I don't know how it works in that world. Whatever is whatever's the best you should do. So do we need to, I mean, the, the back I assume you need to purchase it soon for it to People still be around. Yeah. yeah, I mean, okay. mm -hmm. essentially that's why I'm asking you guys. If you guys give me the okay, I will be calling them tomorrow. Yeah. I go ahead. Yeah. Right. Because we've already okayed it, yeah. right? So, okay. so Marianne, how are you feeling? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I th so I think all of us have said yes. Mm -hmm. So the um, the next um, only other one that we haven't talked about is the green space fund. We do have a hundred and seventy one thousand dollar fund balance allowance in there. A hundred thousand uh, will is has been anticipated to be coming out of that for a year now, I believe. That, for is the that Glen. All, is that already encumbered? Is that in that? It's not encumbered, but um, the, it is reflected in that projected beginning fund balance because um, I think okay. last I heard it should have happened October. Mm -hmm. So I had had it. Okay. That fund balance has taken that hundred thousand dollars into consideration. So the twenty-five thousand would be coming out of one hundred and seven. Correct. So and then and then what? So what is being proposed at this point? I think last year we put twenty five thousand dollars into the green space fund. What is being proposed is that there's twenty five thousand dollars in, but that it would go towards the invasives project that we're working with Tecumseh Land Trust on. Yeah, I don't um, in the general fund. I'm not sure if we had allocated a transfer. Let me look. I thought we did. I'll tell you for sure. It's been a minute since. Oh, we've the twenty. About you it. don't know if the twenty-five thousand went. Oh in no, this we year? we did have a twenty-five thousand dollars transfer to go into the green space fund. So basically, it offset. It would offset if we decided to do both of those things, the transfer in and the invasive. So mm -hmm. we would end up with one hundred seventy thousand dollars still at the end of the year. 
I'm not sure why we would put money into the fund and just to have it sit there potentially. I, it's going to have a fund balance. Um, I, I wasn't necessarily for putting more money in the when we're looking at this kind of a deficit budget. I'm not sure why we would take the money um, just to just have it sit there. Mm -hmm. We can always take money out of the general fund. We can if we're if we're presented with a proposal from Tecumseh Land Trust for um, an easement, we can always choose to take the money out of the general fund. It doesn't have to be in that fund for us to make a decision to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. contribute to the easement. Uh, Hold on just a second, Krista. I know Krista will want to hear. Do you have thoughts either? Well, well um, so I know we're talking about budget, not about programs. Uh, and I have not talked about Krista. I have not talked to Krista about this, but in thinking about the Wellhead Protection Plan, uh, I, I'm, I'm starting to wonder whether when we put money into the green space, if that should be protecting the area around our wellheads should be our first priority. So I don't know. Some of it clearly is protected in the Glen, and I'm, I know Krista knows more about this. So that's getting into getting off track, but I, I did want to say that that's been what I've been starting to think about in terms of green well, space. Well, and I, I, I think that we probably have quite a bit that we could do in-house because the wellhead protection plan is a really good document as it is it just really needs to be updated because it hasn't been done for a while yeah no i'm just talking about conservation easements on land that's in the wellhead oh, you're talking area. about getting a, okay yeah so that uh, uh, yeah. so i'm getting off track a bit uh krista go ahead Thanks. Kristen McGaugh from Tecumseh Land Trust. You can put me on that clock. I promise I'll be <laughs> less than three minutes here. Um, I appreciate all the looking ahead you're doing tonight. It's very difficult stuff, but um, very good dialogue. And just in the vein of looking ahead, to let you know, uh, we'll look forward to f getting back on track with the Wellhead Protection Plan. And we had done an easement draft to um, used for the village land a few years ago now and a lot of different things have happened so we got sort of off track with that and I'm thinking we're going to be relating more to the revived environmental uh, commission mm -hmm. look forward to that as well because there is a good bit of priority setting that I think we need to do um, good news Yell Springs Creek took it over Friday afternoon that that proposal for clean Ohio they didn't get enough proposals to use that money mm -hmm. Uh, so there's some open space well oh there's some open space money around for next year and they might even just start an open round out of that fund so I'll definitely let you know about that but that cannot be used for ag land at all mm -hmm. and so we've got three properties that I expect we might have an opportunity to act on that all are a part of either the green belt or the country common in 2015 so just to say, I appreciate saying that it could come out of general revenue for a project like that. Uh, unfortunately, at the same time, there's a lot of clean Ohio open space money. There is not as much federal farm and ranch protection money as we have had for the last nine years. So this is the first year we weren't able to get that. So um, there's two of these properties could go to auction. Uh, maybe not if we're able to work with people proactively and we're certainly trying to because that's a lot more cost effective than you know getting getting into the clutch and having to uh, try to pull together millions of dollars at an auction so that's where we're at just to give you a quick glance ahead any questions Thank or thanks. thanks thanks Krista So Karen, you were suggesting not putting in an additional, just not putting. Yeah, yeah, just because we're we're down so low, just don't yeah, burden so. it more. I think so. We will have to just make that decision next year. How about the invasive project? Yeah, we'll okay. do that. that, I mean, that, that yeah, okay. but but that we've in. got money. We'll have money in the okay. fund to take yeah, care of it. Yeah, just don't transfer the just yeah. don't transfer. Okay. Got it. Okay. Well, uh, one last question about. Everybody, I've always heard that you cannot transfer, that enterprise funds have to stay where they are. But you can get a court order 
to move them. What exactly is involved in that? I need to figure that process out. I'm not sure and I don't want to. Um, okay, could you do that? Because I mean that's that's something we may want to look at for the water plant. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so I think, I mean, I think we've, have you gotten all the feedback you need from us for tonight? Um, I think to move so. Forward? Yeah, I think we're all for comfortable yeah, yeah, with so. fund. That's the only yeah. one. There's plenty of money in that. That's basic kind yeah. of maintenance. I don't even think of that stuff as really capital. It's more right. sort of maintenance in a way. But I mean, if, if it counts as capital, it's capital. And I, I don't see any problem with any of those so I get, expenses. Sorry. Um, the only thing I, I wanted to clarify is, I mean, are we talking about, for the most part, taking these out of existing funds or making transfers out of the general fund? For which which one? Just most of the things that we've been looking at. Oh, on with, the front page? Right, because okay, well, with the exception of, well, I mean, the street fund we can afford for 2015. But I'm just wondering, why do we need to transfer anything out of the general fund? We don't right now. Right. Um, but the, the street fund, that's projecting sure. forward we would eat into that reserve that would be in there right so that the but we wouldn't be making transfers otherwise right we not would. this year well okay. the green space fund was kind of a question but right. no okay. yeah um in, in the past well last year there were more capital projects than what any of those funds could handle so right. there were lots of bigger transfers from the general fund so if if there were any extra purchases moving forward, because you never know what's gonna you know come down the road, um, those those special revenue funds are directly supported by the general right. fund. So, okay. okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. So are we ready ready to, um, go, into go into executive session? And this, thank you so much, Melissa. Yeah, you guys you. have done a great job. Thank, thank you, you to, to the crews the for staff. yeah, just for taking you know sharpening your pencils and yes, patty yeah. for Being demanding creative. it yeah. <laughs> um, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of um, discussion of water plant consultant engineering candidates I, I move that we go into executive session for said purpose second okay what's true yes 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 Queen. yes Donnie and Joe Calling the meeting back to order. Um, we just got out of an executive session after having a two-hour budget session. So um, welcome. Thanks to those of you who stayed, and welcome to those of you who are just arriving at the meeting. Um, uh, announcements. Um, announcements from anyone in council? Yes, I have several announcements. Um, several of them have to do with uh, issues um, things with com uh, community solutions um, and you may recall that uh, we uh, supported a grant that uh, community solutions uh, made for getting <coughs> money to fund a YouTube channel and they received that grant oh, cool. and so um, that channel is going to be called the Yellow Springs Energy and Climate YouTube channel and it will have interviews from Community Solutions upcoming climate crisis conference as well as other interviews with other people regarding uh, renewable energy and sustainability. And uh, along the same lines, there has been a group that started meeting a few weeks ago around climate action plans. Uh, more than 60 people attended a few weeks ago at the Glen Helen building. And the second meeting of this group is going to be tomorrow at 7.30 at the Glen Helen building. I've passed out these little things for council and there's some on the table. And um, I'm very excited about this. Uh, the potential for this is that Yellow Springs, like Oberlin um, and Seattle and some other cities uh, around the country could develop a climate action plan that would involve businesses, the village government, the college, the university. I, th I find it very exciting. Uh, also, I want to announce that Community <coughs> Solutions is having their uh, conference this weekend, Climate Crisis Solutions, Curtailment and Community, and there are some brochures out on the table. Um, and lastly, I wanted to thank um, our village crew the streets um, and parks crew who worked on the beaver 
flow device, which is still a work in progress, but um, I've taken some pictures. I'll pass it around to council and then Patty, if you would give it to Jason. I will. Um, but John Eastman um, did the design. He conferred with Bill Bebco to have a design that would hopefully give enough water for the beavers and keep the level uh, so that the detention area would serve as flood control. And uh, Vicki Hennessy had contacted a, a, natural, a national expert on how to manage beaver-human interactions uh, who had provided the initial design. So um, I made up a little card for them that shows the device and the crew members putting it in and, and the beavers. Um, <laughs> And, and uh, the water level has been rising. It hasn't risen to as far as it can go yet, but the beavers are building the dam. So, thank you. Um, I would just announce that tomorrow is uh, voting day. And so if you have not early voted, uh, don't forget to vote. And oh, and just it's at the uh, Antioch College campus. Back in, again. The, in the wellness center? In the, gym. Yeah. In, the in the gym, gym. Yeah. I, I'm guessing it's back in the in the, the, back the south gym. Yes. It is it south gym. Back in the old south, south gym. gym. Yeah. I believe so. Yep. Um, and I wanted to uh, just as a quick follow up to the local policing forum we had last Thursday. Thank citizens, village team members, council members for attending and participating. We had about 70 folks that uh, were there to provide feedback. Um, I know we got a lot of great uh, comments just about how it was organized. And I particularly want to thank Village Mediation. Um, it's been really nice. Uh, at this point, the HRC has worked with almost all of the mediators that we have. And uh, I'm glad to see that program in action. It, it was really useful. And, uh, and you know, I would recommend that people use that resource. And on our table was <laughs> a um, letter from Miami Township Fire and Rescue, an invitation. Um, for firefighter recognition and swearing-in ceremony. This it's n it, next Thursday, November 13th at 7 p.m. at Miami Township Firehouse. They will be um, swearing in a number of firefighters and uh, EMTs and recognizing, um, recognizing the new firefighters. So, oh, yeah, well, th and then also <clears throat> on uh, Friday, December 5th, there is the Miami Valley Planning and Zoning Workshop. Um, we have this on our table, and I asked um, Judy to provide it to all of our commissions that are related to planning and zoning. And so this, I think there's a link that you can get that online. Judy probably knows that, if anybody's interested. It's, it's an annual thing that they do, and it's actually really good. It's one day, it's only $50, and they go through, they, they bring in a lot of people from outside the region. They go through a really good uh, planning and zoning workshop. Anything else? Okay. Uh, next, we have a review of the minutes um, from the October 20th meeting. <coughs> okay, let me find my stuff. Uh, page one. There was the last two paragraphs were essentially the same. One, I guess, needed to be removed. What is this? Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. And page seven. Motion to accept is amended. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Um, next is a review of the agenda. Um, if, uh, if there's anything we want to move around, there isn't a lot on here, so there isn't a lot to move around. Um, hmm. um, I would like to add a nomination for the open HRC seat. Okay. We'll do that under new business. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, if council would go ahead and uh, have the discussion move the um, water plant process the ranking up oh up so to that, okay yes I'm sorry yeah so that Johnny and Joe can call right and I so uh, after for the public hearings. right so That's we'll do, the next thing we'll do is go through <coughs> petitions and then we'll do that um, 
Okay, um, Lori, um, there wa wasn't much in petitions and communications, right, but a but, couple. Um, <coughs> well, one important thing, let's see, I'm going to pull up a different window here. Um, <coughs> first off was the treasurer's report, and I'm just going to quote a couple of key quotes. Um, Star Plus is our basic major investment. Um, continues to, to provide a small but steady stream of income on the one, nearly 1.6 million under investment. For the first nine months of 2014, the village's average, average income from Star Plus was $264, which represents a net yield of 0.2%. Um, but still, that is better than nothing. And she says, I see no re reason to change our current investment strategy because our options for investment are quite limited and we are still seeing some small returns. So I don't know if there's, if is there any need for us to m do anything more with that treasurer's report? Um, I think just uh, the consensus to accept or perhaps a motion to accept, Judy, does it have to be a motion? Uh, you know what, that's actually really useful because when the auditor comes around, it's it's nice to see that you in fact did acknowledge the treasurer's report officially. Yes. Can I get a motion? I so move that we accept the treasurer's report. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> right. Um, Brian. Uh, turned in this flyer for Next Century Cities. It's a group promoting development of high-speed internet in communities. I don't know if you wanted to say anything more. You know, about actually, that. Uh, Tim Barhorst from Community Access Panel is here, and I think he's ready to speak during citizen concerns okay. for a few we'll minutes. We'll we'll yep. Okay. Um, then Laura Curlis turned in her letter, which was also in the Yellow Springs News: Eight Reasons to Support the CBE. And I'll just point out the two letters that were on the desk. One was uh, uh, acknowledgement from the Antioch College Board of Trustees expressing their appreciation to the village for proclaiming uh, September 6th as Antioch Wellness Day and for our decision <coughs> to forego charging the college for the water to fill the pool for the first community dip. And then we also had a letter from Jim Hammond uh, about Mills Park Hotel and the uh, potential excise tax. And we're going to put that into, I, I think we should put that in our next packet and uh, decide what to do with it then because usually it's just hard to deal with information that comes to us at the last minute. Okay. Um, thank you. So as requested, we will... Um, actually go on to old business, um, the update on the water plant process. Um, on October 27th, we uh, had a special meeting and we heard from three uh, potential uh, water plant consultants. This is, these are called the criteria engineers. We've decided to do a design build process. Uh, the first part of that is to hire a criteria engineer that we'll work with to decide what kind of a plant we want, what our needs are, they will take that through 30% completion of drawings. Then we'll put that out for bids. A design build contractor will be hired to, um, will be selected from those bids to provide the remainder of the drawings, the engineer drawings, and also to build the plant. And then the criteria engineer will also basically take us through, they will be our agent to take us through the entire process. Um, the reason we decided to do this is because this is a pretty important emergency project. We just had a major um, uh, maintenance problem with the, with the water plant this summer, and this is a priority project. And with the design build process, they're able to overlap parts of the project. They're able to do start permitting while the before the the plans are completely 100 percent complete so there are some time savings and and some cost savings in the process that's why we decided to do design build so um with that so we saw we heard from three firms hntb burgess and naipel and hazen and sawyer with with uh, ljb um, so i'm going to turn it over to patty to um, kind of explain the next steps in the process now and what council will need to do next is to rank the three firms that we that did presentations last Monday rank them one two three and then I will begin negotiations with whatever firm is ranked number one to try to reach an agreement with them on the contract and a dollar amount and the services that will be provided under the contract 
Um, if I cannot reach an agreement, an acceptable agreement with the firm that's ranked number one, I will move on to the firm that's ranked number two uh, and on down to number three. If we don't make an agreement with one of the three firms, then we start all over again. And this is a requirement of the Ohio Revised Code, um, and that's why we have to do this. Okay. Patty, can you mention again who was on the selection committee? Um, the selection committee for the original evaluation was um, Karen and Jerry, Johnny and Joe, myself, um, Scott Straley from Ohio RCAP, which is the Rural Communities Assistance Program, and was Melissa on? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. <coughs> so um, we were all on the committee, and it um, seems like there was one other person. It was so. Dan and me? No. Um, anyway, uh, the way we did it, um, Scott, Scott Straley provided us with a criteria form that had, you know, uh, points, a uh, total of 28 points in, in various categories. We revamped that a little bit for um, our use to make it a little bit more specific to what we wanted to do. Then the committee sat down in a room and went through the six proposals that we had received and ranked each of the firms according to the criteria on that form. Um, and we all talked it out, kind of led it through as, as objective a process as we could based on the criteria. Um, with that ranking, um, the three firms that presented last week were the three top firms out of the six. Um, so. and, and we checked their references. We did check their references. We checked previous projects that they had done to see if anybody had um, any problems with them, any issues as far as leading them through the process or with the design or any maintenance issues with plants that were up and running. And um, none of these three were involved in Steubenville, but I think Joe was going to call Steubenville, which is the only design build plant in the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. Did you get a chance to? Uh, the superintendent to that project resigned. Oh, okay. <laughs> new one, so. Well, there you go. I'm waiting on a response from him. Okay. Mm. He probably won't know very much about it since he wasn't the. Yeah, he just left this summer. So. so all right. So. So what I'm thinking is that um, if council agrees that we'll go around the table, we will. Um, <coughs> each give our rankings and and you know reasons why or you know impressions um, starting with Mary Ann does that sound reasonable and then obviously I don't know if they'll all be the same somebody will do the mathematics of figuring out what the <laughs> I'm keeping it what tally. the end ranking is going to be so. weighted average yes the weighted yes Okay. So, Marianne? Okay. Um, well, what I based my ranking on, rankings on was first um, reading the proposals that the three companies had uh, given and what was included and what wasn't included in those proposals. Um, secondly, um, the actual presentation and how thorough I felt they were in the presentation, how I sensed that the team worked together well or not maybe not so well and whether it seemed like they really addressed the things that had been asked of them by our RFQ I, and lastly I have talked with staff and I heavily weigh uh, staff um, because they're the ones that have expertise and they're the ones that will be working with these people so my first um, uh, that I would put in first place is HNTB, second Hazen and Sawyer, and third N N and B. Is that B and N? B and B and N. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. So uh, I guess first of all, I want to reiterate uh, one of the things that uh, Joe Bates said at the end of our meeting on the twenty seventh, because uh, that's stuck in my mind. And it relates to what Patty, uh, what Marianne said about relying on staff's input, and that was Joe told us that any of these th three firms he could work with, and I really do think that the selection committee did a great job of shortlisting those three. Um, so it, I feel like we're going to make a good decision no matter what. Um, but the other thing that resonates with me is in our RFP, we did say that. Uh, Village Council will award the contract based on the recommendation of the selection committee and uh, 
the HNTB was ranked uh, with the objective criteria number one. Um, BNN uh, was number two. They got 26 points out of 28, and Hazen and Sawyer 25. Uh, uh, ironically, HNTB got a perfect score of 28. Uh, beyond that, I will say the presentations uh, certainly were relevant, uh, particularly because they were asked to bring the team that we were going to work with. And in discussions about community meetings and, and other things, I, I thought it was really important to see how they interacted with us and how they understood uh, the village of Yellow Springs. Um, so putting those two things together, uh, definitely I, I rank HNTB uh, number one for the objective criteria and also, also because they were very well prepared. Um, and I would then put Hazen and Sawyer as number two and BNN as number three, so same as Marianne. Okay. I, I said on the initial review committee and uh, had a chance to look at each one of the proposals in detail, plus set through the presentations. And uh, I rank them as uh, HNTB number one, BNN number two, and uh, Asian and, and Sawyer number three. Um, well, I was not on the committee, um, but I also, um, you know, looked at the reports and watched the presentations pretty carefully and also listened uh, pretty strongly to what staff and people who were on the initial review committee. And so mine is uh, fairly similar, HNTB number one, uh, Hazen and Sawyer number two, BNN number three. Okay, thanks. I was on the committee and, and none of us have really talked, said that much about their project work, but I think that that's, doesn't even need to be said. I mean, that's, that's what the selection committee did was, was, and what those criteria were about were, are these people qualified? So all three of these firms are more than qualified for our project. Um, the things that were um, important to me, um, the design build process is, is a relatively new process in the state of Ohio and I wanted somebody that's that's comfortable with and familiar with the process um, H okay I always forget which where the T H N T B I need to know who that N is um, H N T B clearly had the most experience with design build water and wastewater projects so that was important to me um, they um, they had they presented I feel the most um, comprehensive scope of work what they saw their job as being they basically took us from beginning to end and and that's the way they presented it and you know working with OEPA um, and and taking us through the permitting process that was impressive and um, uh, they also set a pretty aggressive deadline. I mean, they, they had these the overlapping tasks that were going to happen. So I thought that that was important too. So I um, I ranked HNTB first. I ranked uh, um, Hazen and Sawyer second, and I have um, Burgess and Naple third. Well, that gives a total of uh, five HNTBs first. Um, that also brings Hazen and Sawyer in second with uh, four number two rankings and being in third with four number three rankings. So, um, and I think, um, you know, for myself, um, I would rank HNTB first. Um, I'm kind of a toss up between Hazen and Sawyer and being in being second, third. Um, Joe? <laughs> The, you, the, the same range. It's your plan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can. Um, yeah, if you want me to put them in order, um, I would put Hazen Sawyer first, HNTB second, and BNN third. Okay. Johnny? I put uh, <coughs> HNTB first, uh, BNN second, and Hazen Sawyer third. So um, to me, it looks like it's still uh, HNTB, Hazen and Sawyer, and BNN in that order in the rankings. So, so council, I guess I don't know if we need a motion for this, but let's. We want to make oh, sure there's yes. no comment from comment citizens. Any comments or questions? Okay. 
So let's um, have a motion to direct Patty to begin negotiations with HNTB. Okay, I, I move that um, we have a motion to direct Patty to uh, start negotiations with HNTB um, and just yeah, as a water plant consultant. As, as a water plant consultant, I don't know. Should we put in the other? Just no. okay. Yeah. And okay. all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for sticking through a long. Appreciate it. it. Thank you, guys. For you guys. See you tomorrow. Bright and early. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to um, our regularly. Um, scheduled meeting agenda um, first uh, next on the agenda is public hearings and legislation we have first reading of ordinance 2014-23 amending sections 274.02 and 274.03 of the environmental commission regarding membership and powers and duties Judy here we go <clears throat> whereas in 1971 council for the village of Yellow Springs established an environmental commission for the purpose of the conservation and improvement of the environment and whereas the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs adopted Ordinance 2011-34, which amended the membership requirement of the original ordinance, and whereas Village Council again wishes to amend Section 274.02 to better address the needs of the Commission with regard to membership, and whereas Council wishes to change gendered language contained in the Powers and Duties Section 274.03, now therefore the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, Hebrew ordains that. Section 1, the existing Section 274.02 membership of Chapter 274 Environmental Commission of the Codified Ordinances is hereby amended. Section 2, the amended Section 274.02 is hereby enacted to read as follows. The Environmental Commission will consist of five members to be appointed by Council. One member shall be a member of Council appointed to serve at the pleasure of Council. Four mem members shall be appointed for three-year terms. At the outset, two members shall be assigned two-year two terms and two members shall be assigned three-year terms, after which all terms shall be three years in duration. Of the four members, one member can reside within Miami Township, and another may be a non-resident employed within the village. Each member of the commission shall demonstrate experience and or education in the area of environmental <coughs> sciences, environmental advocacy, environmental health, or public environmental policy. The commission shall select its own chairperson annually. In the event of the death or re resignation of any member, a successor shall be appointed by council to serve for the unexpired period of the term for which such member has been appointed. A majority of members shall constitute a quorum. Section 3, the amended section 274.03, sections A and C are hereby enacted to read as follows. A, advise council on matters affecting the preservation, development, and use of the natural and constructed features and conditions of the village insofar as beauty, quality, biological integrity, and other factors are concerned. In addition, the Environmental Commission shall advise council on any major threats posed to the environmental quality which may resu result from human activities and developments. Section C, conduct studies, surveys, and inventories of the natural and constructed features within the village and such other studies and surveys as may be necessary to carry on the general purposes of this chapter. Section 4, this ordinance shall be in full force and effect at the earliest time permitted by law. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Mary Ann, do you want to... Um, I mean, this is all pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, I don't know uh, if you need to add much. I, the only real change was the addition uh, of the fact that one person on the commission could be someone employed in Yellow Springs but not live in Yellow Springs. That's the only essential change. Uh, the Section 3, are those... Were there changes to that? What? Pa apparently, there was just some gender language. So we oh, the gender, gender language. Okay, I'm sorry. The two okay. man-maids to constructed oh, okay. and peoples to human okay. or something. Thank yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> or mans to <laughs> human. Um, <laughs> any comments or questions from citizens? Mm -hmm. Any? I'll bring it back to council table before we vote. Any comments or questions from council? We have to read it twice. Yeah, we, yeah, read it. we have to read it twice. Yeah. Right, I know, but... We still vote. We, we can still vote. Yeah, we vote. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> so, Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. Askland? Yeah. McQueen? Yes. Winter? Yes. So, so I, I was going to nominate the people to be on the commi commission. I can't do that yet? No. <sighs> so Darn. Next time. I know, but I wanted to meet this month. Mm -hmm. um, 
when was your meeting again? Um, November 18th. Well, there you go. Meeting's on the 17th. 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 Oh, oh, okay. Okay, well then, can, let, can I say when the meeting will be so that it can... Is it all, you can, can we make this take emergency. effect immediately? I mean, yeah. there's no... You can add emergency language for the second reading, and then it'll just go into effect. Yeah. The second Why don't we do that? Because it was a, you know, it was a. Yeah, this is dragging out. It, so let's make it emergency so she can have the meeting. So, so um, I've scheduled uh, the meeting for November 18th, which is a Tuesday at 5:30. And can we meet in the council chambers at that time, Judy? Is it open? So, so that's mm -hmm. where we will meet. Uh, the next piece of legislation involves the library roof, and I am going to recuse myself and turn it over to Lori. All right. Um, so, Judy, do you want to read the resolution? Yeah, this is resolution 2014-56, authorizing the village manager to enter into a contract <clears throat> with Weatherproofing Technologies Incorporated to install a new roof on the Yellow Springs branch of the Greene County Library. Whereas the village council desires to improve the roof system on the Yellow Springs branch of the Greene County Library, located at 415 Xenia Avenue, and whereas council has received quotes from three contractors regarding this project, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, that Section 1, the village manager is authorized to enter into a contract with Weatherproofing Technologies Incorporated to install a new roof system on the Yellow Springs branch of the Greene County Library. Section 2, said contract shall be for the amount of $258,577.55. Section 3, this resolution shall go into effect at the earliest period allowed by law. Okay, can I have a motion? Yes, I'll move. Second. Is there any discussion um, or, or Patty do you want to say anything further about this I mean, um, we've talked about it quite a bit yeah the, I think everybody pretty much understands that it was the lowest of the three bids and mm -hmm. we can get a 50-year warranty out of it with limited maintenance and I, I would just say that I mean the library is such an important resource and, and it's a, a e great equalizer anyone can go to the library so it's really important that we maintain that building. Right. And the roof is perhaps the most p important part <laughs> of any building in some Especially way. Especially a library. Right. Yeah. 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 Any, any final comments? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Okay. So let's bring Karen back into the room. And uh, actually, we can go ahead and I'll just start the citizens' concerns if there's any concerns out in the audience. Um, go ahead, come forward, speak your name. You have three minutes to uh, present your case. Uh, thank well, you. Hello, I'm Tim Barhorst. I'm a network engineer and a village resident. And I'm a member of the community access panel as well as the yellowsprings.net citizen group. Uh, as you probably all know, we're pursuing high-speed fiber uh, throughout the village as a possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, you have in your packet a two-page document that mm -hmm. explains the mission of Next Century Cities. Um, I'm here to urge Council to consider having the village join Next Century Cities. Uh, they're a, a national 501c3 nonprofit charity. Uh, and they're a new, relatively new organization founded to support communities and leaders across the country as uh, they all seek to ensure that everybody has access to fast, safe, and affordable, reliable internet. They currently have over 30 cities on board. Uh, on October 28th, Brian and I uh, had a conference call with, the, with Deb Sosha. She's the executive director of Next Century Cities. And uh, we explained a little bit about the village and what we were like, and she thought we were an excellent fit, notwithstanding the fact that we're relatively small compared to the most of the cities that are currently in the organization. Uh, Next Century Cities would provide assistance to us in the process of designing, building, and funding our municipal network. Uh, this could occur with consultation with experts in other cities, uh, especially the mayors of those cities uh, uh, that have been through the process. Uh, it gives us access to many other resources, advice, and tools uh, that would be greatly helpful in this process. There's no financial commitment or fee. Uh, all that has to be done is that the council has to agree to the core principles 
Those principles are, uh, in a nutshell, I'll just go through them real quick. High-speed internet is necessary infrastructure. Fast, <coughs> reliable, and affordable internet at globally competitive speeds is no longer optional. The internet is nonpartisan because it's an essential resource for residents and businesses in all communities. The provision of fast, reliable, and affordable internet transcends partisanship. Communities must enjoy self-determination. Broadband solutions must align with the community needs. There is no perfect model that is universally appropriate. Towns and cities have the right to consider all options. High-speed internet is a com community-wide endeavor. Building effective next-generation networks requires cooperation across communities. It is critical to involve and include multiple stakeholder stakeholders and perspectives to succeed, including businesses, community organizations, residents, anchor institutions, and others. Meaningful competition drives progress. A vibrant, diverse marketplace with transparency and offerings, pricings, and policies will spur innovation, increase investment, and lower prices. Uh, communities, residents, and businesses should have a meaningful choice of providers. And collaboration benefits all. Innovative approaches to broadband deployment preserve, diver present diverse challenges and opportunities to communities and regions. Working together, cities can learn from the experiences of others, lower costs, and make the best use of next generation networks. And when they refer to next generation, they mean a, uh, a quantum leap in speeds over what we're all used to. Gigabit and higher speeds are uh, in place through many of these cities already. For example, the city of Santa Monica, California has a 100 gigabit network. Uh, uh, that's just unconceivable compared to what we all use right now. And it brings about a great deal of opportunity and uh, uh, potential for business development, in my opinion. Uh, the other thing this could bring us, uh, and I'm sure we've all rehashed this before, with the threat of State Bill 5 looming over our, our village, uh, it could be a really constant revenue stream that we're spending the property. And uh, the payoff could be, uh, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm in want to be in touch this week with the National Technology and Information Administration, which is a uh, subsidiary of the U.S. Department of Commerce. They have given out over $4 billion for municipal internet in the last uh, decade. So um, I'm really excited about the prospects for the village. I think it would go a long way to ease some of the tensions I've observed uh, in the back and forth about the CBE, because whether the CBE passes or fails as far as public funding is concerned, we need this kind of infrastructure for the future. Okay. So thanks for listening. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Jim. Brian, do you want to add anything? Uh, yeah, I, I will just reiterate what Tim mentioned about um, <laughs> uh, affiliation with this group simply means that we accept those principles. Um, they do have one village that's smaller than us, 1,700 uh, approximately in New Hampshire. Um, and so I guess I, I would like us to either consider it tonight or at our next meeting uh, joining or affiliating with this group and so I, I think you know part of it depends on you know do they would need I would think a kind of an official rev resolution is that what they'd be looking need, for? is there a membership application I assume is it she basically said I mean it's I mean I think it would make sense for us to pass a resolution or something but yeah. she said basically it's accepting those principles um, that uh, that Tim just read out to us well, yeah, the resolution to reiterate that if right yeah, that's what I think would be that's fine yeah have a resolution with the nine um, I think it's nine thingies yep bullet points yeah principles and, I, and again I think uh, you know we've I, I think we've all sort of generally agreed this is a good idea I think affiliation makes sense and it certainly fits with uh, our goal to take the lead on these kinds of things as a village so just if you will work with Patty to prepare that legislation. Sounds good. Um, for the next meeting, that would be great. Uh, any other citizens' concerns? Yeah. Come on up, Isaac. Hey, y'all. My name is Isaac Delmater. I uh, live on Walnut Street. Your uh, address, you need to give your oh, full address. Oh, the whole address. It's 218 Walnut Street. Thanks. Corner of Walnut and Pleasant. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I actually thought of something that I should have said earlier, uh, but I wanted to thank you all for uh, investing in our water plant. So I think that's a good idea. Uh, I also wanted to bring up the uh, issue of the hiring committee that will choose our new chief. 
I noticed that uh, law enforcement officials and uh, village officials are well represented, but there's only one, <coughs> excuse me, one citizen on the committee. No, there are and, four. Okay. There are four. Okay, so four. Yeah. And I'm wondering if uh, if we would be better served if we had uh, people who could express the views that were brought to uh, HRC's attention in the meeting uh, two weeks ago. Well, that was partially why um, I attended and I asked other members to attend. Um, and I was there, Brian and Lori were there, um, and TJ um, Turner was there. He's on the committee. Um, so we did all attend. In addition to that, um, the, the four citizens are TJ Turner, uh, John Gudgel, um, uh, Leslie White, and I am drawing a blank on the fourth person. It's not Jalen. Uh, it's Aaron. Aaron, Aaron. Sorry, who was also there. Aaron. So yeah. That's what I was referring to. Yeah. So there were there were five of us um, that are going to sit on the committee that were there um, that night, and we do have. I did actually ask for the um, the things that the the mediators wrote on, so that we could have those when we meet to to discuss the applicants for the chief's position. So, I mean, those concerns will be brought over um, into, into the committee when we start talking and reviewing the applications. So, um, you know, at this point, uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult to change the committee now um, because, you know, we're getting, the, it, the application period is closed and we're actually getting ready to review the applications later. But that was one of the reasons that I asked the members of the committee if they were available to attend that so that they would be there to hear the input um, so that we'll, we could all be on the same page. So I, I promise you that everything that was said that night will be uh, will be considered and and I did I do have them and matter of fact they're sitting in my office the the uh, the responses that that were written down by the mediators so although I, I have a question mm -hmm. it, I mean that it was it was a great group it was a great discussion but it was a limited group mm -hmm. and I, I feel like that discussion before what was decided or all of those sheets become policy or directed at policy it, we need to have a long discussion here at council table that all needs to come back to council table it has to become council policy not the input from a from a public meeting that really wasn't a council meeting well we could should, should we have it as a discussion item under new business next meeting and we are getting that report um, and so we said that we were going to have that for our 17th meeting. So yeah, I think that's well. It, it, the only thing, the only thing is, we do have a meeting scheduled later this week to start reviewing the 18 applications. Um, that's I, just the first. That's just the first round. But right. right. But but I think I think that I think that it can inform the discussion. I think mm -hmm. it can definitely inform the discussion. But. You know, I, I those nothing has become policy. I mean, we have not changed police policy based upon that mm -hmm. meeting. It was a community discussion. Right. So we've got to figure out what we're going to do with that input. Right. I think I think it's going to take certainly take more than one meeting. Oh, I mean, yeah. one meeting just to review the findings and to understand, maybe get a presentation. I mean, maybe that's something we need to discuss as we're doing agenda planning. How HRC. Okay. And, and they may not be ready. I mean, I'm guessing that you may not be ready for a whole presentation at the next. Uh, I mean, they. So what they did was they. Uh, uh, there's an Excel sheet now. It's all. It's all done actually. Oh, really? um, okay. Yeah. There's an Excel sheet that you know uh, listed the priorities and and what comments were repeated the most. Uh, there's a cover letter that it that explains that. So I think uh, if we wanted a presentation, we could get okay. one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. I mean, we, we had six facilitators there as well, so, you know, right. I mean, we could definitely bring in some people that could, you know, distill it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, it, it, and essentially from, from the group, I mean, I heard, I, I was moving around to the different groups that night, and, and I was hearing the same thing from each of the groups, and those things were reiterated during the, the recap session, pretty mm -hmm. much, and, and they were very accurately reported in the 
in the Yellow Springs news. I mean, that was it, from my take on the on the meeting, the, the forum. That was very accurate. The way it that was actually the comment I got is that uh, HRC was going to just submit Warren's exactly. article. <laughs> yeah, exactly so, the way it was. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, there is a good public record of mm -hmm. how the, the the citizens that attended that that meeting mm -hmm. feel about the various things. And that will be taken into consideration. So, okay. but there are there are four there are four village there are four there are two council members and two village employees. There are four members of the police department. There are four um, there are four citizens, and then there's Mayor Fobert uh, on it, and there's also uh, an outside police chief coming in to serve in that capacity. The the professional perspective of qualifications and experience and how that relates just to the job in general so there are 14 people on the on the committee so are to your I, I'm not clear Karen what you were what your concern is um, well that that it was it was a informational it was session. an informational yes. discussion session right. we Council has not even heard it yet as a body. We have not discussed it. So for for that to suddenly be presented as as policy and information that will that will that will direct the hiring of the police, the next police chief, I think it's I think it's a little um, I think it's I think it's a big step. I think it's I think it's it's a big step. I you know I don't want this to get into it, before we've ever had a chance to look at it and consider it and discuss it, hear from our police chief. We didn't even have any input from our own police department at this session. Before we, you know, we need to have a discussion. We have said we're going to have a discussion about policing in Yellow Springs. That's what I want to have. That's not saying that that um, this can't help inform, but the discussion but but nothing has been adopted nothing has is formally accepted as policy village policy from that meeting so, so what are what's the plan then in this regard well, the, I think the plan is for Brian to have a presentation prepared for the next meeting to, to present the the input from the forum to council for discussion is and it may not be a bad idea for you to, you know, kind of start to look forward of, okay, I mean, that's one discussion, and that will mm -hmm. probably be pretty long. Then where do we go? You know, who do you want at that meeting? Do you want chief there? And, you know, who do you want? How do we want to? You mean for the next meeting? For the next meeting and, and just how we move forward in this discussion right. of oh. policing so, in Yellow Springs. Yeah, so you're not, you're not just talking about... The hiring of the new chief. You're really looking at this broader issue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think I mean I I what I hear Karen saying and that I uh, agree with is that it was a I think it was a great discussion. I am on the committee, so I am certainly carrying that with me, and and sh it will shape the way I ask questions. It shapes the way I'm thinking about um, the uh, about policing and our our um, and 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 how I'm and it's shaping and, and affecting the way I'm thinking about the the, pol the police, but there's a distinction between an open discussion and what is now official council public policy that we have voted on. That there's been a, yeah. a, okay. a robust yeah. it's been put out in the community, and this community likes to get new information and ponder it. And you know, it's just gone into the newspaper. We, there may be. 10 letters that say, you know, I wasn't there. If I had been, here's what I would have said that, and I don't feel that my perspective, and there could be 15 people saying the same thing that they feel didn't get represented. So just, I think, <coughs> bearing in mind that it's it's kind of contingent, and it definitely seemed, seemed good, but it isn't fully tested. Right, and I will reiterate. I mean, I, I thought we did have uh, diverse representation, but mm -hmm. I have had people comment that there are some opinions missing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I agree that we need to keep discussing it. Thank you. 
Um, any other citizen? We kind of got off on our own concerns. Um, any other citizen concerns? Seeing and hearing none, we'll come back to council. Um, next is new business. Uh, Brian has a nomination for a seat on HRC. That's right. <clears throat> so I think we all have uh, the sort of uh, narrative resume as well as a uh, letter of interest from Steve McQueen. Um, Mary Ann and I uh, interviewed Steve together last week. And, uh, and that was great. Um, some of the things that really impressed me about Steve was uh, is his background as a minister, uh, his long relationship with the community. Uh, he was he attended Antioch College for two years. Um, he's got a lot of. Uh, I mean, he's traveled internationally. He's thinking diversely. And uh, I mean, to be quite honest, we also have not had uh, a person of color represented on the HRC for almost a year now. Uh, he's younger, so that's also, I think, a really great thing. And, and I love to see all our commissions uh, diversifying. Um, so uh, Brian and I interviewed Steve, and um, then I went to the HRC planning uh, meeting for the retreat on Saturday. and. Um, I, I was impressed with Steve uh, and uh, impressed with his, um, his participation in the planning meeting. I think that he will, uh, he's a good bridge person, I think. He really tries to listen to what different people, different constituencies are thinking and tries to find commonality. And of course he has my same last name as me. <laughs> 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 so I support his nomination. So does one of you want to make a motion? Sure. I, I move that uh, we accept uh, Steve McQueen's uh, request to be on the uh, HRC. And I'll second. Any discussion, Council? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, now we're on to the manager's report. Um, the assistant village manager search committee uh, will be conducting interviews uh, over the next two weeks. Um, we're doing four interviews on, is it Wednesday? Wednesday of this week, and the final fifth interview will be on Friday of next week. Um, originally, I was hoping to have <coughs> the, the um, council interviews and meet and greet on the 20th, but um, some of you aren't available, so is everyone available on the 24th? I am. For the assistant village manager uh, interviews here at um, six, did I say six, seven, and eight? I believe, yes, six, oh, seven. Six, seven, and eight, not. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Three, four, and five with the meet and greet from six to eight for the public. Mm -hmm. So the 24th at three, from three o'clock on. No, I teach, that's my, I. I um, okay, I will look for uh, a different day. I just wanted to get. Um, so for me, Monday, Wednesday, Friday are, are pretty bad. Okay. Um, unless, this, this, unless it's later. This is why I actually brought my phone so I could look at a calendar, but um, the reason that um, I would like to get the council interviews done before, um, before Thanksgiving. What about the 25th, Lori? The Tuesday, the 25th, is everyone available? I for believe the that should be fine. Three, four, and five on the 25th. No, I'm not available. <laughs> okay. Well, um, we may have to do I, it without I, one of I, us. I mean, uh, yeah. And, um, okay. you know, it would certainly be fine with me. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I mean I, it is actually a little bit unprecedented that we're the whole council. That the whole council is interviewing. Yeah. To be I would be more you. comfortable with just having a, a couple of representatives, really. I mean, we're doing that. That's what we're doing. Yeah, um, yeah. Karen is on that search committee. I'm, I'm comfortable with my with representatives. Okay. Um, I just don't think, I, my schedule is super busy between Okay, them. so if council's, if council's uh, okay with that, then we'll just move forward with the public meet and greet. Um, for the AVM candidates. Um, we're interviewing five. We'll probably narrow it down to three mm -hmm. uh, and have them come to the public meet and greet. So the public meet and greet will be... Um, um, let's go for it. To the let's move it back to the 20th uh, from 6 to 8. That's a Monday night? It's a Thursday night. The 24th is a Monday. Oh, the 20th. All right. 
the 20th from 6 to 8 uh, for the meet and greet uh, for the AVM. So I just got confused. So council's not doing interviews as council's a whole panel. Correct. But you're keeping staff interviews? I am keeping okay. staff interviews. Um, the police chief application did close last, uh, the peri application period did close last Friday. We did get 18 applicants. We will begin the review of those applications later this week. Um, I think it's Wednesday night. Um, so um, after that, we will be moving forward with the process, which is initial review um, by the committee, perhaps a second review, some background checks. Uh, council will um, be interviewing them. You will have a public meet and greet very similar to the assistant village manager process. But um, it might take a little bit longer just because um, we want to be sure we're getting the right person. Did you so. say our first meeting is the 15th? No, it's, it's the 5th. The 5th, yeah. I, the I fifth. was looking at the 5th and reading yeah. it as 15th. Yeah. The 5th. Um, and um, starting, what time is that? 6. six. Okay. I just need to get it on my calendar. <coughs> Um, the meet and greet for the police department in general is scheduled for Monday, November 17th from 5 o'clock to 6.30. Council does start a budget session at 6 o'clock, but the meet and greet will go on until 6.30. Um, the members of the police department will be in rooms A and B for the public to come and, and meet them. We have a lot of new officers. I think Chief will probably be there. Um, so the only other thing that I had, um, which I think Judy put the first version of this in and not the second one, um, is that the, uh, the hotel excise tax, it is my recommendation to council uh, because we have had some correspondence with some uh, members of the public about it um, that we hold off until we do a little bit more investigation and we've now scheduled that for a discussion at the next council meeting. And that is all I have. Okay, Judy. Yeah, I just gave you a little update about board and commission memberships, and you've got some renewals coming up just to be aware of them. Planning commission, you know, you know who you are. There's a seat coming open at the end of December, and then you've got the township seat. BZA, one seat's open at the end of December. Cap, one on the 19th of November, and HRC. Looks like you covered yourself already, but mm -hmm. never nice raised your And out. maybe Cap, too, but yeah, I'll check with you. Planning commission. Great. Okay, and it sounds like the charter review is not going well. Charter review committee is not going well. Well, yes, I did exhort you to uh, reach out yeah. aggressively to your friends and family. And how many people did we decide are going to be on that? Five. 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 Mm -hmm. Five citizens or five total? I think we said five total. And so one of those people will be a council member, right? And then staff will be support? Ca staff will be non-voting support, yes. Yeah. Who, who, so you've got three more you need to, you have, I don't think you've decided, I don't think you've decided. Um, but you had said you were interested, right? Yeah, I was trying to get you interested. Oh! <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what, whoever recruits more than the other guy oh. doesn't have to be on the committee. So <laughs> there you go, there you go. I like competition. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh, now that we also said council, I mean, our, our solicitor was going to be on here. Right, that's yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, and just a time frame. The time frame for it was that you'd have a committee pretty well pulled together by the end of December to begin meeting in the new calendar year uh, because also there's the legal RFQ process happening. So there's not, it's not like there's a gigantic rush, but where are we at in the legal RFQ? The, the legal RFQ process, um, we received um, seven proposals uh, or seven statements of qualifications. One of them was disqualified for not following the instructions, um, which leaves us with six. You each have copies of those six, and they are so also available in my office if anyone wishes to review. I think I gave Judy a set, too, in case somebody asks her. Um, we will, I, I would like to get through the, the water plant consultant process and then we will begin the process with uh, the legal uh, counsel review. Uh, I will send uh, to counsel the original 
RFQ for you to review. As you go through the different proposals, please try to rank them just in your own mind based on the RFQ, the, the RFQ that went out. Then we'll have a discussion um, at council with the, to, to rank those similar to see who we want to ask back for a, a presentation, very similar to the water plant consultant. You can ask three of them, you can ask all six of them. It's entirely up to council how you want to proceed with that. Um, and then afterward you will rank them and we'll begin negotiations uh, with them based on uh, the services we're asking them to provide. I am trying to get a number of billable hours together um, that you know we've been doing over the last couple years. Um, I'm also going to get with Judy to uh, kind of count a number of meetings. Obviously we have council meetings that we want them to attend, but we also have uh, BZA and planning meetings that we would like them to attend. So those are the kind of things that we're trying to get together for that. Are you, um, it, are you gonna do some reference checking? Because to mm -hmm. me, that's, that's one of the biggest things yes. on this is. Mm -hmm. um, Same as we did with the water plant consultants, we will do some uh, background reference checks on them. But on, on all six mm -hmm. or, okay, good. Mm -hmm. We did the same thing on the, on the uh, water plant consultants, so. So that sounds like we're going to be easily into the new year on that one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you say reference checks, are you going to get reference checks on the firm or on the individuals? On the you? firms. Okay. Uh -huh. On the firms. We most of the most of the firms that presented um, are larger firms. Right. Uh -huh. um, you know, we did have Coolidge Wall did uh, did submit. Um, there was uh, Frost Brown Todd. Uh, Manley Burke, Bricker and Eckler. Um, Although so. they all did, just like the water plant consultant did, they all had a lead. And I, I think we should have some input on right. each of those lead mm -hmm. attorneys. Because okay. that was clear that they were. Mm -hmm. Each has a senior partner. Yeah. Right, because they do different things. And uh, I, go ahead, sorry. Because most of them specifically identified that attorney that would. Be, right. mm -hmm. that, that was yeah. the one that I okay. right. would like to add check. Yeah. You know. And uh, several of those came from uh, recommendations from the Ohio Municipal League. So I will, uh, I can forward the the folks that could be reference checks. Okay. So. Well, I, I might ask you to help me out with okay. the, the legal end of the checking anyway, because that's what you do. So. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Um, on to future agenda items, reviewing future agenda items. Um, so what did we, what's on our agenda? We've got the ordinance 2014-23 second reading, and that's gonna be as an emergency. Yeah, and you wanted, uh, Patty, to bring the ordinance amending the readiness to serve charge. And the, and the solid, solid waste, waste. Solid waste, yes. Utility waste, waste. waste. yes. Oh. Um, resolution accepting the principles of the next century cities. Uh, proposal. Dis discussion on the hotel excise tax. Okay. So at least, yeah, I'm, yeah. We might have something about the water. Uh, um, depending on how the negotiation goes, we might have a sure. resolution uh, on the uh, water plant consultant, yes. Now we have flour and sugar, I see. Oh, flour and sugar. Flour and sugar. That's a good one. And then Brian, at least HRC that one's fun. Presentation. Yes. Um, and so, so just do we have a particular format that we want for that presentation? I mean, set, do we want to set a time limit? Do we want particular? We do have budget again. I know. I was going to say, let's kind of work backwards a little bit. So yeah. at 6 o'clock, we will be starting this meeting at 6 o'clock. And so we will review the entire budget. And then so the first meeting in December, those two meetings in December are going to be the first reading and the second reading. Is that the plan? Sure, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, council, do you think, do you feel like we're going to be ready um, for that, that, that you're going to be satisfied with I one more so. discussion okay. at the next meeting before we then hear the legislation for the budget? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. I think we've, we've done pretty well. So, um, I mean, what we have these these this legislation that we just discussed is actually pretty pretty quick, I would think. Um, 
the excise tax that might be a little bit longer discussion was there anything um, so that's this one this one um, I don't know maybe a half an hour would that does that seem like enough time for the HRC presentation so 15 minutes for the presentation then questions and discussion yeah does that yeah. seem reasonable and I, I what I'm thinking about doing is maybe inviting one of the facilitators and maybe a member of HRC that's helped put together the report I don't know is that how, how does council feel about that amount of time guess. well we're talking about having ongoing discussions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think it's a start yeah I would just like to you know hear the presentation but and hear what this because you weren't there and then and then again if you could make part of that maybe some kind of a proposal for the ongoing discussions of yep. how we're gonna gonna discuss that then um, also the other thing that's always on the the second the agenda of the second meeting is the reviewing the commissions our mm -hmm. boards mm -hmm. and commissions so um, Okay. Patty, can in your manager's report, can you update about the skate park too? Oh, shoot. Yes, Brian, I'm sorry. Well, okay. next meeting's fine because okay. we'll know and, more then. And also, also add in, I mean, we're add in your project review, project schedule review mm -hmm. also to your report for all the, oh, oh, for all yes. the projects yes. we're working on. Yes. You yes. just kind of they start to all, lay out yeah. a timeline, even. Yeah. They should all be done with the exception of um, streetscape will still be ongoing. It's supposed to start this week. And um, and um, the water loop completion isn't due to go until after the first of the year. Okay. Um, so we've already done our executive session, so we don't have to do that. Any other comments or questions, Council, before we have a motion to adjourn? Right, I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all. Thanks. Long